is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Let me get DIY Vapor so he can speak to us. Because my computer makes me switch the sources all the time. If that's not it. Let's see. Yeti microphone. There we go. Okay. Speak for a minute. All right. Perfect. Hey, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. This is uh, JFM Development Just Friggin' Mix live stream with guest DIY Vapor. Or that way. DIY Vapor. <laughs> well, no, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm looking at it different. Yeah. 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 I'll just go like that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, I have an interesting story to start off our little live stream. So, I don't know if you guys noticed in the past live streams, but these, these headphones right here, they... They were falling apart, literally, the ear things. Like, I guess Beats are known for this, but the ear cuffs, they, like, come off. And, like, the padding and stuff starts coming off. So I was looking online, they're like, oh, yeah, you could buy these uh, replacement ear things and do it and whatever. And how to take them off and all this. And I'm like, why buy them? I'm just going to fix them myself. So what I did is I took a butter knife, I took the adhesive off, and then I used a glue gun. I glued them back, and then I stuck them back in, and it worked fine. So, <laughs> cool. for brand new again. I mean, they cost 300 bucks, so I'm like, you know. Damn. Yeah. What What are they, Turtle Beach? No, you you're pretty much just buying the name. <laughs> pretty much all it is. It's uh, Beach. Beach, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely not worth the money. You can get definitely the same quality for a lot cheaper. It's just, just the name. It's like buying Nike or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I ruined my last set. I put them on the chair and then come back and sat on them. That's no good. <laughs> that, so I went and got a new pair. I went down to Best Buy real quick because, you know, I was online gaming and mm -hmm. I um, had a league race that night. So I go down there, pick up this one pair, come back, and the microphone's not working properly. So then I go back and just buy the best pair they have, which was uh, these Logitechs, which, um, which I, I love. No, oh, there you go. Yeah, but they were like 200 bucks. See, I didn't really expect to use headphones when I was doing these videos until... I realized live streaming with other people, you technically really have to have headphones. Yeah. And, like, the way I planned it out was having, like, a, a nice condenser mic, which is kind of right here. That's why I can go like this. And, like, the thing is, is I had one of those kind of headset ones before, and it always yep. kind of sounded like tinny when I was, like, talking. Right. Or, right. like, sometimes there would be barely enough gain at all, so, like, you couldn't even hear me, so... I decided to change it, and I actually like this mic, the Yeti one. It, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Nice. Working out good. It, yeah, I've been thinking about a different one. Actually, my levels have gone down there. What about that? That might sound a little louder. <laughs> Don't buy one. No? No. I'll tell you why. If I can grab it. Hold on. I just... I have it... I don't. I don't use it. I can send it to you. Okay. It's the blue. It's the blue. Snowball, oh yes. Which yeah. is actually a really good mic. The only reason yeah. why I got this one is because you can stick a headphone in it, and I, I just don't need this one anymore. So like the only difference is you would have to stick the headphones through your computer, and do yeah. it that way or whatever, or do a Bluetooth. But yeah, this one's awesome. It has three different modes on it. It does it oh, so cool. you, it can get. Like audio from both sides, but yeah, yeah, I have this. I'm not using it. You can definitely, you're more than welcome to it. Oh, yeah, yeah that'd be cool, John. You can send it with the juice you're gonna send me. Yeah, <laughs> this guy doesn't stop calling me, bugging me. Like, I don't want to go to work, leave me alone. All uh, right, yeah, I normally get telemarketers around this time. Oh, yeah, yeah, true that, true that. So, if you guys haven't noticed. Yeah, I got the right side this time. Look right there. Liquid Barn sent me the brand new DIY starter kit, which I'm going to be doing a review, and then it's going to be given away. So, one lucky winner is going to win the Liquid Barn starter kit. So nice. That's exciting. And what's really exciting about it is it actually has three of their new flavors. One that hasn't even been released that I'm really excited to talk about, but can't yet. But all those three new flavors are in that kit. I checked. So, it's exciting. Cool. Yep. Cool. Vaping Buckeye, uh, what's going on, man? I got a pair of uh, Sibera 150s gaming 
headset. Oh, cool, bro. If you, you're going to see me blinking my eyes a lot. Um, I've got really bad dry eye the last couple of days, and uh, it's killing me. I didn't bring my eye drops up here either. You got a tick, man. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So I've I've got a bottle at work, a bottle in the office, a bottle in the truck, and a bottle here. It's uh, been driving me insane. Um. Oh, other awesome news. While we're talking about news, um, just so you guys know, if you are interested in considering this is the beginning of the video, and some people don't like to stay to the end. My website, it's live. It has new uh, features. I've been doing a lot of work to it. So make sure you definitely go check it out. Link is in the description. And I also started putting coils up there. So you can now buy coils on the site. And soon they are going to be concentrates and other merchandise. So definitely keep checking like the site periodically. But coils, they're available now. So if you want to buy some awesome, nice, tasty coils, definitely check it out. Cool. Gavin, how you doing? And how you do everyone else? And Chris B. John Steely, what's up, man? Or Steely. For some reason, that looks familiar. His name. I just can't put my finger on it. But it looks familiar. What's up, man? Let's see, Dad's in the house. What's going on, Dad? Vaping Buckeye. We already said, what's up, <laughs> Stuart? Stuart's there. Let's see if he's yeah. drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if he's not, he will be. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, th Thad just said, oh, well, I'll win that too. He probably will. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Actually, here's another thing. I have a giveaway. Well, actually, it's technically not even a giveaway. It's pretty much going to just be a give to this person. So I'm probably, because I just started my Patreon account like less than a month ago. And pretty much since it's all new and, like, people are still, like, learning about it to sign up, I put, you have an entry into a monthly giveaway, right? But he was the first one and, like, the first one who actually got charged because none of the new Patreons, like, got charged yet because that happens at, like, the first of the month. So he was pretty much the only one in, so I just have to send him something. So I'm probably going to do a flavor giveaway for him. And then the following month, there are going to be a lot more people in it. So that's another thing in case you guys do want to become a Patreon support what I do here. Be part of monthly giveaways and other bonus perks. Just check out the link. All Everything and all the information is on there. But yeah, so there's going to be special giveaways for that. And considering I'm going to have more merch being prepared for the store, there's going to be even more stuff and more opportunities for giveaways. So that's really cool too. Cool. I'm going to start getting like all these wholesale deals. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited. Nice. I'm excited. Nice. Well, I had some fun today. I, uh... I get to work, I get one of the trucks, I go out to one of the jobs, and on the way there, I'm like hitting my hitting my uh, RDA, and I'm like, damn, yeah, this this juice is good. And then I kind of look down at the mod and realize I've got no damn battery power. I didn't switch the batteries over. I've been running them for two days. Uh, uh, four, a four-battery mod, and I've got no battery power, and I've got four brand-new batteries here. <laughs> so I stopped off at a vape store, and I thought, I'm just going to buy a new mod. So I said to him, I said, you've got charged 18650s, right? I said, because I'm going to get a new mod and I'll need a couple of them. He's like, no, we haven't. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. Really? Yeah. So uh, he said, well, if you get them, he said, I can give you mine. And I said, oh, okay. So I'm like looking around. And I said, you know what? I said, if you've got one of those ones that, um, who's, who's that? Do you know who Mr. Faceless is? No. All right, well. He's just put up three question marks. Doesn't look like... Uh... Anyway. Um... Oh, do you answer any of our questions? Yeah, if you have a question that's relevant, yeah, we'll answer it. Um, yeah, so I said to him, I said, well, what about one with a built-in battery? And he said, I've got one. And it was this um, uh, E-Leaf iStick Power. So I went ahead and got it. It's this little 80-watt 80 80 watt mod with a 5,000 um, milliamp battery. And do you know what? I love it. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, just something real simple. I'll probably be using it a lot now. Yeah, there's one that had my eye, um, and it's not even out yet. It really sucks that it's not out yet. But, uh, you know, I've been looking at the Pulse RDA for a while because, like, I really want to get, like, a decent squonker. And uh, they're actually releasing a Pulse squonker box 
and it's the guy from the Vapor Trails channel. He's uh -huh. actually putting it out, and it's supposed. It looks really cool. Like it looks like it's really designed well, and it's cheap, which is definitely a plus for me. The only what? thing is, it's a twenty-seven hundred battery, so I'm gonna have to get new batteries for it. But if it performs and it works well and it gives good flavor, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've yet to try squonking. Everyone keeps saying I'll oh, try it. I haven't yet. Well, I have the Eye Leaf Pico Squeeze, which is kind of like my trial into squonking. And I like it, but the only thing is with it is it's not powerful enough. But if you have an unregulated squonker box that has 2700s in it, you're automatically going to get a little bit more power than the only 50 that the interior battery gives out. So. My Oh, the vaping buck, I said that was his first mod, the wood grain one. Yeah, I, he did say to me, he only had three different colors in there. The brush silver, uh, another one, not one, a bronze one, and the wood grain one. And I did think about the wood grain one. I thought, oh, that'd be different, but I just went with the silver. Yeah. Looks like pretty it hurts good. pretty good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I've got, I've got it on 60 watts, which is I've been vaping... There's what's a couple the, of what's the max it goes to? Um, 80. 80. And it does uh, it does temperature control, you know, all all of them. Titanium, stainless steel. Speaking and... of temp control, because i like been doing stainless steel coils for the site and everything, like, I made like a whole bunch of fused claptons and I put some in here. And I've been using temp control. And, you know, it's pretty well depending on what you're vaping. And I learned mm -hmm. different... Different flavors and different liquids do better in temp control than others. Like, for example, Dawn, she just sent me pudding powder from Elite by TVC, and I found if I have a, have a stainless steel fused claptons uh, oming out about 0.12, and if I have it at about uh, 90 to 110 watts, and I put it around like 420 degrees, this stuff just tastes like like almost like a pudding slash silk it's just amazing it's great right. i i used to temperature control all the time and in my uh tfe4 um loved it but i don't know i just haven't been back to it recently i mean i think it really depends on what you're vaping on because some stuff i mean it's no different but some stuff like that it seems like the vapes that are like more temperamental and you like really trying to get a certain flavor from it that's where you need to use it with Right, right. I don't know. Chris, well, well, just Chris, real quick. Um, like yeah. when I first tried this on wattage, like I liked it, but it was like not what I was expecting, not anything to write home about. But then when I did put it in temp control and I could finally tune it, that's when I actually really loved it. So I'm yeah. just putting that out there. Okay. Yeah, no, a lot of the juice I think tastes better. Uh, Chris McGregor asked if I. Uh, uh, do you let your juice uh, sit to steep, or do you whisk it up now and again? No, I, once I've whisked it once, once I put the lid on it, that's it. Yeah. I don't don't let any any of the alcohol or anything come out, um, you know, or the flavouring evaporate. I just uh, leave it as it is. Same here. And that, you know what? That actually made me think of another kind of topic I want to bring up, and I want to hear everybody in chat what they think about this, and I also want to hear your opinion, Chris. Um, Speaking of steeping, um, DIY or Die, uh, Wayne Walker, he just put out an article on the DIY, uh, hit, on his uh, website. It's like members only, but he put like a little snippet of like, called a deep steep or whatever, something that take, could take six months or more or whatever, and then like, you know, it was argued that that was more like geared towards like, you know, commercial liquids because you don't really necessarily need to steep DIY that long, but like, Besides, like, you know, some custards, heavy creams, and maybe some bakeries, like, I was trying to, like, you know, make the argument, like, you know, some, there's, like, different kind of vapors out there. There's, like, one type of vapors which have, like, super palates and, like, you know, stuff with, like, uh, less flavor and stuff that, like, steeps really long or they steep it really long. Like, they can get, like, a lot of good flavor from it. But on the other hand, like, like, people like me... I go to, like, the vape shops and, like, very once in a while, or even better yet, when I went to the Foxwoods convention, okay, I went and tried all these liquids that have been on shelves and been steeping for a long time, and I, I must have tried hundreds of flavors, and only about maybe, I can count on one hand the amount of flavors that I actually enjoyed, and that actually gave me, like, good flavor from. The others kind of either seemed more muted or, like, just weren't interesting to me at all. So, like, 
my theory is there's like two different kind of vapors. Like some that have like these super tastes and can taste like every single nuance to things and that like super long steeps. But I also think there's some other people who like like lots of flavor and benefit from less of a steep. At least that's my theory. Right. Yeah. It's um if you're talking like fruits, there's yeah, there is some people that would probably benefit from not steeping much, you know, that normally they only take a couple of days and normally sh shake and vape anyway. But I think to a lot of people, they'd rather shake and vape it straight away. I know um, someone asked me recently about Jess Peachy, which has got a bag of flavor, um, said, uh, is there any chance you could uh, um, bump up the flavor in a little bit? So I made him another recipe. Um, so yeah, that's someone else that has trouble, you know, tasting what we're tasting. And I don't know why that is, whether, they're, whether their normal vape is, like, really strong or I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, that one's particularly uh, real flavorful. Well, I'm not saying, like, by no means am I saying that, like, steeping is irrelevant. Like, I think there are benefits to steeping for a certain amount of time. But I'm talking about, besides commercial, besides, like, selling commercial, where you probably would have to design your e-liquid for that purpose for shelf life purposes but besides that like i'm just saying that in in a lot of cases for some people i i don't see all the benefit in steeping something that long at least to right. my tastes i mean i right. think it i think it varies from person to person that's why a lot of times i like to say you know vape it as it progresses and then steep to taste like I think that's a better way to put it because everybody some people even with my recipes and some other people's recipes like they all say different steep times like why is that because they're doing it to how they perceive it's the best that to their tastes right so m might be another subjective thing but I don't know if that's a cop out too because that seems like the common trend it's subjective you know what I mean but I don't know right yeah I the, the longest one I've steeped was that one recently, the Monster Custard. We made it in a live show and then kept on tasting it like every other week. And it still just wasn't quite there. And that one took 10 to 12 weeks to steep. And then all of a sudden, bang, it was there. But that's the longest one I've had. Normally three or four weeks if it's uh, like a really, you know, creamy like ice cream cheesecake or custard. Normally three to four weeks. It's, it's tops, then I'm fine with it. All right, well, let's see what what some of the people in chat are saying. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Trent says, just use the Norpro mixer and let it sit till the bubbles clear up. That's what I do with the creams and stuff. Then I mix it once a day and let it steep. Yeah, uh, when it comes to using the Norbro mixer, I just mix it once when I first mix it up and then set it and forget it. That's what I do. But, uh, Stuart says... Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, uh, Neb DeCross says, I don't follow DIY or die anymore. His palate is totally different from everyone else's and I don't believe anything he say at JFM and DIY Vapor I will never let go <laughs> okay <laughs> um Jared Garrett says I agree I can't taste things very well I can't smell differences and stuff so I usually don't need to have a very complex mix because I mostly taste the strong top notes yeah I get that uh Yeah, because I'm not a, I, I don't think I'm a huge custard fan. I've got some custard vapes that I do like, and I, you know, I've got a bit of custard in some recipes that I like, but I, it's, it's not really my go-to. See, how I look at it is, like, there are some, like, and again, it's usually a lot of the custards, a lot of the creams, like, they'll get a lot denser and a lot creamier as time goes by. But then sometimes you start sacrificing on some of the top notes. So, I mean, it goes both ways. But, like, I just don't see how, like, some steeping something that long would be that imperative for somebody in DIY unless their personal taste what? tastes better to them. So, I don't know. Yeah. The, then the only thing I had to do, uh, it was Caps version 1 custard that was in there at, like, 7% and then a bunch of other creams. 
Uh, it was just cream dough. It's called Monster Custard. We just put it together for a bit of fun. Um, but that cap custard at seven percent took ages. Yeah. But yeah, everything else. Yeah, and and then once it goes over about six months, most of the DIY stuff just uh, for me it loses it anyway. I I picked up one earlier that was from uh, January and had a quick taste, and it actually wasn't that bad, but it wasn't as good as what it was. Speaking of that, Cap Custard at 7%, I think I have one of the Bull City Flavors recipe packs that was a straw in a custard. I think that has a crazy amount of custard in it, and it's been steeping for a while, so maybe we'll try that one for the Bull City recipe pack today. Right. But, yeah, it would be interesting to see how that one changed, because that one has a lot of custard in it. Yeah. It might even be 10%. I'm not even sure. It's a lot, though. Yeah, there's a, there's a few people. There's people that love custards and people that hate them. See, I like custards when they get to the point where they're, like, nice and creamy and they're not too eggy. But I hate I hate when they're, like, really eggy and nasty. So, I don't know. I, there's a fine point where I like them and then I don't. Yeah. No, I'm exactly the same. I don't like the eggy ones either. For recipe pack. I <laughs> just throw custard in it and the world is good again. <laughs> I'm like that with kind of uh, with ice cream, uh, vanilla bean ice cream from Capella. Something don't work, throw that in there and it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely. Usually I stick to ice cream over uh, custard, anyways, most of the time, depending on the recipe. But I like definitely for creams, I like grabbing ice cream first. Right. Yeah, Matt Williams has got seven percent with a funny face next to it. Yeah, I've normally I use that stuff at one percent, and I know that like Grant's custard that people have been making. It's like it's like somewhere between ten and fifteen percent oh, yeah, right, yeah. custard. Yeah, and it's the, like a six month steep. The Stronana custard, ten percent cat V one. Right. So we'll see how that one comes out. Right. Uh. I, uh Gavin, you said you got the vanilla pudding with lemon and your ultimate cheesecake in the cupboard. How long do I have to steep for? Uh, three weeks. After two, the, the ultimate cheesecake is okay, but it it's, comes into its own after three. Oh, where was it? I just... Uh, Charles E. said, I personally wouldn't buy a starter kit. I would go to Liquid Barn, buy some VG. You can get... You can get you some flavors there to or go to Bull City Vapors, go to Amazon and get you a skill and find a site on ELR. No, well that's an interesting point of view. No, well I like what this starter kit has to offer because it is kind of like an all in one solution. But when I do a review, definitely watch it because there are gonna be some points that I'm gonna bring up and suggestions to liquid barn and a lot of it is going to be in terms of weight and how you how they could actually make it feasible for them even if they don't sell many of these to put in a scale and to put in like a norpro mixer instead of that other hand mixer they have because i actually look personally online you can buy those in bulk for wholesale from chinese manufacturers where it's just probably where they're getting these other hand mixers from Literally, it's pennies on the dollar to a dollar, depending on how much volume they're getting of them from overseas. So, they could technically redo the kit and put it in a scale and a thing. Even if they had charged two bucks extra, it would be the first scale. It would be the first kit on the market to not only have a scale, but it would also have the Norpro mixer, which could mix inside any bottle, which would I think would be a total win. Right. Hell, they could probably even make it work with a label maker too if they really wanted to. Right. Just saying. Yep. Yeah, I think I think they these I think they need scales in them. I think so too. Like this scale right here, and this is the one I'm going to talk about. This scale right here, like on Amazon's between seven and ten dollars, right? Depending on a sale, depending on which buyer you buy it from on there. But if you go on overseas, like go on Alibaba, that's where the you can get and reach the Chinese manufacturers. Literally, you can get this between 50 cents and a dollar, and you can get your own logo put on. They can have Liquid Barn put on it or whatever if they buy it in enough volume, depending on how many kits they sell. 
and then they could make it feasible where it wouldn't cost them any more than it would cost to put all this other labware equipment that's unnecessary if they have a scale. And people would probably buy it because it has a scale. Right. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, no, it'd certainly be, uh, certainly be different. Different than everyone else. It would be. It would be because, uh, Actually, I probably shouldn't say anything because watch these other companies listen to me and like nicotine or whatever is going to go and change it and then they'll literally have a great kit. <laughs> right. Because uh, that, that's the other kind of kit I want to review and do a giveaway on if I can make it work because that way I did a review of all the kits and people have the options, you know? Mm-hmm. Let's see, Matt Williams says, uh, I agree that a lot of the recipes, like the garbage, I hardly ever mix any recipes from other people, even though the hiding people in the industry. Yeah, I, I don't mix, I don't mix many other people's recipes, just so, uh, basically, I'm concentrating on my own thing, you know. I've mixed one of John's, I've mixed a couple of DIY or dyes, mixed uh, one from a couple of other people, but I really, I don't go on ELR very much. I just, uh, I kind of stay away from it just to keep focused on what I'm doing and kind of be, I guess, original more than anything exactly. else. Exactly. Because if you look at it this way, is just like e-liquid and e-liquid reviews are subjective. Some some reviewer could review an e-liquid and be like, "This is the best thing since sliced bread," and you don't personally like it. Same thing with DIY. Like you got, there's a lot of different styles in DIY mixing, and once you like start looking at all these recipes, you'll start noticing every individual mixer's style. And a lot of mixers, there's the large majority of the community who wants nothing to do with sweetener. It will do everything of all courses of all to not use sweetener but then there's a lot of people who do like sweetener and like sweet juices so they'll use it or they'll use different ways to make it sweet and then there's a large group of people who put like sub percentages in and they can taste it like nothing and then there's other people who try to taste it and it tastes muted or they can't taste anything so I mean it, what I, my suggestion would be is when you're looking at making recipes in DIY is make some like make some of all these different mixers and learn their kind of mixing style and how they mix and if it's to your palate then you'll know a lot of the same stuff that's coming out of that person is also going to be good or at least for you right that's my right. opinion towards it yeah no i think you're right yeah if you find someone who mixes and you like their stuff normally you're going to carry on liking it oh he was responding to ned the crow oh okay i'm sorry i just read things here and there <laughs> <laughs> right Chris McGregor says, he, uh, are you over to 99 juices yet? Yeah, so that's where I go now. I've still got to put, I still haven't put much content on there. If you look at my YouTube channel, there's not been much happening there lately. I've just been, just been so busy at work. Um, I come home at night and I'm just too tired to record anything and I might mix a, a mix or two and that's really it. But uh, hopefully I'll get on top of that real quick. I've got... Um, I've got the Bavarian cream shoot out to do, and it's there. Are, all five of them are steeped and ready to go, so I need to do a video on that. I might do it after this live show. Um, there's also something I want to talk about. Um, I was trying some blueberry pop tarts, which I haven't done in a while, and I was eating them, and I'm like. Tried the blueberry something vape from a door e liquid, so it's got. I had blueberries on my mind, so I go and get these blueberry pop tarts. I eat them, and I'm like, dude, I could totally make this in a vape. So I think that's one gonna be like the next uh, profile I go after is a blueberry pop tart because Flavor's new pastry zest flavor would make like perfect for a pop tart. And then we have all these biscuit flavors, so and cookie flavors, so I think I could definitely get the crust down and get the blueberry down. So I, I think that's gonna be my next profile is get is like a really authentic like Pop Tart flavor. I think I could Right. Do that. Funny enough, I done a blueberry vape uh, Sunday. Me and my wife went out for breakfast. And uh normally I'll have eggs and bacon and all that stuff. Uh, I didn't feel like it, so I had blueberry crepes. And they were fucking awesome. So what I do, the second I get in, I said to my wife, I'm going upstairs and mixing blueberry crepes. And I got them pretty close. And uh, 
I took it to work with me the other day and vaped the whole thing out, so I've got to make some more. But I think that one, I think that one would be a video at some time if I can keep it long enough. That sounds like a good recipe. I would definitely mix it up. Well, it's blueberry crepes, and they've got um, like a cream cheese filling inside of them, like a vanilla cream cheese filling inside the crepes. So when you cut them open. You've got this blueberries and syrup, blueberry syrup and this cream cheese. It's really good. All right, hold on. They want me to read a comment. Hold on. Ned the Crow, where are you? Okay. Ned the Crow says, at JFM, for example, look at DIY or does a recommendation that Pebbles was recipe of the year. You know and I know that the recipe is garbage. It proves that DIY or does opinion is false. All right, first of all, I didn't say that that recipe was garbage. I think <laughs> somebody might like that recipe. I didn't say it was a horrible recipe. It didn't remind me of fruity pebbles. It reminded me of like a, a fruity kind of grainy vape, but didn't wasn't nothing like the cereal. That was my opinion towards it. I, I do think Not Charles Manson has a lot of winners. This is a good mixer. And I choose to separate myself from DIY or die in terms of commenting on any of that other stuff. But, it's not bad. I think some people would like it. It's just, I don't personally think that that should be recipe of the year. I'll say that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I've seen, you, seen your video where you said that. Yeah, like, I, well, you I, tried don't, to, I don't yeah. think I said no, it was no, garbage, I didn't. did I? No, no. You said it was a nice vape. It just didn't, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, it didn't the flavor me profile of, yeah. of Fruity Pebbles. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, it might have changed a little bit because somebody said, like, to steep it for a really long time, so maybe I should try it again. But, I don't know. I think somebody would probably like it, but Pebbles, and Fruity Pebbles, I just didn't see it. Right. Uh, someone asked if I was a trucker. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. I do a lot of driving at work, but no. I put lines on the road. I work for a company that stripes roads. Uh, Tammy Vape says, What's your thoughts on Norpro Mixer breaking down flavor molecules? I have been told on multiple occasions. I disagree. I love using my mixer. Um, okay. First of all, um, it may or may not break down flavor molecules, but here's the thing. If you have a tasty vape and you have a recipe you know you love, right? And you're mixing it with the Norpro mixer and you're vaping that liquid, okay? Unless you're selling it on retail and you're worried about a long shelf life, I think that's irrelevant because the flavor molecules break down over a period of time, including with the use of Nick. That's like the whole oxidation process and the recipe breaking down over time. So unless you're making for like commercial then maybe you might want to look into like uh, uh, one of those heat plates that you can regulate the temperature to a safe temperature and then slowly vortex it and spin it slower without introducing more air into the mix. But I think the I think people's biggest argument with the Norpro mixer or any kind of handheld mixer other than something where the environment's controlled inside where there's no added oxygen is the fact that the theory is more oxygen in there is causing more oxidation, which is causing like uh, volatile molecules in the flavor to go faster. But I mean, if you're vaping something and mixing something like right away or within a couple weeks or a month, I don't think that it's going to really negatively affect you that much, at least not in my experience. No, juice needs to oxidize. Yeah, I know. If it wasn't in there, it wouldn't be the same. You know, it's just... Uh... I, I've had this discussion with a few people and they say you're, you're whipping extra um, yeah. oxygen into yeah. the mix. Well, once you've got a bottle with a cap on it, and if you see up the top there, it's got, oh, it's got air in it up the top. Well, no matter what I do to the juice, how much I shake it or anything else, there's no extra oxygen going in there because the cap's sealed. So it's like with the Norpro. The oxygen's actually mixed up within the juice. It ends up coming to the top, but you just, uh, I, I think you're, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to stop using it. Um, for me, it mixes it up great, um, especially when you're shaking vaping. Yeah, I mean, like, no matter what, like, those molecules are going to break down in time. That's just how it is. 
And it kind of goes with the same conversation we were talking about, like, having, like, a really long shelf life and then being really necessary for DIY. I think that's more of a concern if you're commercial or if you're, like, mixing for a whole bunch of people that you need to last a long time. But if you're just mixing for yourself or to try different recipes, it's not going to negatively affect it that much or the consistency of it unless it's throughout a long period of time. Right. So... I, I don't see how it's a big deal, in my opinion. Right, no, I I don't either. And I don't I don't say that there's a I can't prove that there's a plus side. I be I keep meaning to do a mix where which needs steeping for two weeks and I do one with the Norpro and do one by hand and just see if there's any difference afterwards. I probably if there is, it's probably negligible and won't even be able to taste it, but yeah. I, you know, whether one helps the steeping process or not, you know, I I, yeah. I ought to try it, but I just haven't yet. When I use the mixer, I don't use it to have an edge on steeping times or anything like that. The sole reason I use it is to make my mixing easier and simpler. Like, so, so I don't have to go shake everything, get all these hand cramps, so I can just put this little mixer in there. It mixes it up, and it just makes everything simple and a little bit fun at the same time. There's no more reason to it other than that i mean granted uh one of those heat plates and magnetic stir things is next on my list of things i want to get just to mess around with and then maybe i'll do like a little trial of all of them but really it's 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 mainly a convenience thing more than anything right and i notice a lot of the time if you're using max vg and the the room is cool which this one is i was mixing some the other night it, don't, it won't even whip bubbles into it if, yeah. if the VG is thick enough, yeah. all you're doing is just uh, is just m mixing the flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you use something a little runnier or a little bit uh, warmer, um, I warmed some up in the microwave. I gave it four seconds in the microwave the other night and uh, and uh, add some flavorings in it and and shook it up and it 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 clouded up real <laughs> real bad because it was less viscous. Sugar Sorry, cookie eggnog. That sounds awesome. That is awesome. I love that recipe. That's actually like one of my favorite holiday flavors I've ever made. I'm working on a pumpkin pie one, but it, it's slow coming. Why? It's a hard one to crack. Wow, someone's trained Sonic 3% super sweet is a lot. Definitely. <laughs> The most I can use it at is 1%, and that's when I want something really, really sweet. I normally use it at a half. Whoa, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, what? I made sugar cookie eggnog with the super sweet from Capella. Wound up shooting out about 3%. Whoa. That's not in my recipe for sugar cookie eggnog. I'm just putting that <laughs> out there. Mine's like, I think mine's between half percent and 1%. I would not put that much in there. I mean, that that's enough to grow hair on your chest. Right. Now, normal sweetener, like just the one you get from eSig Express, the generic one, um, probably 3% of that is about the same as 1% of super sweet. Hmm. Um, and I used that one up to two before, but uh, and I've been using sweetener a lot lately. Um, I've kind of got a sweet tooth all of a sudden where I never used to touch it. Been rubbing off on you? Yeah, yeah. I had a bottle of super sweet there for probably six months and hardly ever used it. Here's how nah. I look at it, and I build coils now, so believe me, I, I do feel the pain because I know I have to, like, burn off my coils and change them all the time. But here's my look at it, is we vape because we don't want to be smoking, and then we vape these sweet juices because why not taste something that tastes awesome? And if you love a really sweet juice and it makes you happy, and it's like going to the, going to the store and buying a freaking chocolate bar, why not? Why not, right? Right. That's how I look at it. But don't get me wrong, sometimes I'm like, wait, maybe it's a little bit too much sometimes, and then sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I, yeah. I, I, I get both sides of the argument, I really do, I do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, some people like it, and some people don't. Hmm. Uh, Desiree that... Parker says, at JFM Development, Jennifer Jarvis's uses a sweet potato flavoring. Might be a good addition to a pumpkin pie recipe. Oh, interesting, yeah. I heard a uh, sweet potato, and then there was another one. Uh, it's another um, obscure type of flavor. It's like I think it was like a vegetable or something, or vegetable-like. 
I can't think of it. Yam. Yam. I oh, heard like yam it. and sweet potato might be good additions to it, so I'm, I'm going to try and figure out if... Uh, I don't think I have either of those, unless I just don't know about it, but I'm going to definitely try some of those flavors. Thank you. My... I was going to say something. I don't remember what the fuck it was now. Oh, well. It obviously wasn't that important. Hmm. Oh, I know what I was going to say. You said about flavors. Uh, Inner Wear is rhubarb. Have you ever tried that? Uh, did I get that one? That's, that's, an, that's an oddball one. It does actually taste like rhubarb, though. That's just a cool thing. But uh... I wanted something kind of tart. I've not used it yet. I just dabbed a bit on the back of my hand, and I was like, holy crap. I don't think I did get that one. I think that one was, like, a little bit, like, too kind of iffy for me to get. Yeah. Like, some of them are just like, oh, do I really want that? And, yeah, that's probably Well, the one. last order I put in was uh, Bull City when they had the uh, the proceeds was going to the, you know, the hurricane that went through Texas. Um, and... When I done that one, I ordered a lot of obscure shit. I thought, finally, I'm going to just put a bunch in the basket that I've always looked at and never got. Some of them were good, but some of them were, were weird. Rhubarb's definitely different. All right, temp control is kind of pissing me off right now. Sometimes it can be a bit... Because I'm, pain I'm, I'm sucking and nothing's coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put it back in the wattage for now. <laughs> yeah. See, and I never had that. When I've used the TFE4, and I used to put a nickel build in there, I never, ever had one problem. But I tried stainless steel recently in something, and I started getting the same. I was hitting it and won't get nothing off it. It, like it seems like when the coil is hot, like when you're chain vaping, that's when it happens. Uh, yes, yeah, because it gets up to its temp and it won't let you have any more. Plus, the, well, the resistance shouldn't change it. Do you lock the resistance? Uh, the thing is with this one, I haven't f figured out how to. Okay. Yeah, that that can because obviously it changes. I honestly don't even know. If you guys have the Smock Pro color, and you know how to do it, let me know. How do you lock the resistance on this? I tried. I can't figure it out. I don't know if it's just not in the mod or not. If you know anything about it, definitely put it in the comments. Or if you catch the replay, put it in the comments. Thank you. Do you know what? I looked at one of them earlier. If they had had the batteries there, I would have probably got one. That was one of them I was uh, had my eye on. Well, I'm kind of glad I got this little thing. Yeah, no, it's cool. Let me shoot in front of it. Hold it up to the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, I recognize that one. Yeah. What's the one called again? It's a uh, I stick power. Oh. Okay. I said just just eighty watts. Right, Normally I wouldn't favor. buy. Do me a favor. Yeah. I actually had them. That's why I recognized it. Okay, but I had a problem with it. So, and I I ended up getting rid of two of them, and I ended up changing them on. Whatever you do, do not charge that with the power outlet in your car or a two amp charger. Yeah, it takes one amp. They told me that in the store. It's got to be a one amp, and it takes like seven hours to charge it. I fried the chip twice on that thing. Right, right. Yeah, he was very adamant about it when I went in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like seriously, out of experience, I literally fried the chip twice on that thing. Right, right. Or wait, no, one of them the chip fried, and then the other one, like it was just tweaking out like the program or something in it. It just was like resetting and rebooting and just doing weird stuff. Right. So, yeah. Tommy Vapors, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for stopping by, my friend. Uh, uh, Jared Garrett said, how much for a set of Fuse Clapton's? I use stainless steel and actually need some coils. It's on my website. I will send you a link right now. Um, shop. Stainless steel fuse Clapton's right here. Copy and paste. All right, so here is a link for the stainless steel fuse Clapton's. But you can look at all the different coils I'm offering right now. I might be adding some more coils down the road. But, yeah, I have a pretty good deal. All the coils, they're sold in two. So, if 
you don't have to buy a single coil, you just can't do it, you just buy them in two, because I assume everybody uses two coils most of the time, and if not, you get two coils and can use two of them, you know, so, yeah. All right. Uh, Eric Bush says, have you used Lava Kick by Liquid Bond? Thoughts on it? Yes, I have used Lava Kick. It's an excellent chocolate flavor. It's like, how do I explain it? Uh, it definitely has a more realistic tasting chocolate than a lot of them, but it still kind of suffers a little bit from every other chocolate vape, but it does work good in like, if you're trying to make anything like a brownie or anything like that, or even just by itself, it's really good. So it, it really depends. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like a chocolate brownie. That's how I'd put it. Yeah, chocolate to me is always a dodgy one. Yeah, especially in vaping. This. Yeah, it just it sounds great. But uh, I've only made it work a couple of times. And I can't get nothing out of it. I love Capella, but I can't get nothing out of their chocolate either. Oh, okay, Jared. Yeah. See, I, when I when I made the site, I, I didn't know how I wanted to go about um, selling the coils, so I just assumed selling them in twos would just be a good idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Antisocialist says, at your FM... Uh, you're still going to have a coil build video. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I did have a coil build video, but I did it in the JFM development just mix group. I did it on a stream. And I did it that way because the thing with coil building is they can be long and drawn out, especially when you're on the drill. So I didn't want to put that on YouTube necessarily. So I figured, you know, to spread out content, it was a good idea to put it in the group. So I put that one in the group. Right. But if you go to the group, you can find it. I haven't made a Clapton for ages. I used to sit here most nights making coils, and I can't remember the last time I actually made one. It can be therapeutic. Like, it's fun sometimes. And yeah. Then, and then sometimes it can make you, like, want to tear your hair out, but we don't have yep. hair. So it's an extra conundrum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the alien coils. Um, I've done one good one once, but they're just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, what I do with aliens thing. is I make an extra long alien because I yeah. know there's probably going to be a section where I mess up or have to get back into my groove. Yeah. And then that way I can usually recover and make a couple good coils out of it. But that's also why I price the aliens higher because they're harder to make. It takes more material and they're a pain in the ass. So They are yeah, a pain in the a ass. A lot more work goes into them. So hopefully nobody buys them. By the by, the fuse Clapton's. <laughs> yeah, like it's like the tank tracks with Yeti, because I guess uh, Yeti at uh, Yeti Wire he sells tank tracks or whatever, and he hates making them, or whatever. So it's like don't buy them. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what the tank tracks one? I never had any problem doing that one, but the the alien ones is oh yeah, they pull your hair out if you don't stretch that wire just right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ned Ned the Crow says try the butter snatch recipe. Yes. Let's get that thing. I've got it right here. Uh, I say I've got it right here. Yeah, hey, SpaceX, I totally agree with you. Um, I actually personally prefer uh, Fuse Clapton's over Aliens. I personally think, one, they ohm out really low. Which on some mods that can be a problem where it won't even be able to read it. And two, the flavor difference between a nice thin wrapped gauge of a fused clapton, which on mine, I use 40 gauge, which is a really thin gauge, so it almost looks like reflective. You get like similar, if not better, in my opinion, with those than you do on aliens, but that's just me. I mean, you do get a warm vape with aliens, but you can still do that if you put up the wattage on the fused claptons, too. So. Yeah, it, yeah, they're. There's definitely not much, uh, not much difference. Yeah, and, and like you said, they are just, they just look good. <laughs> and I don't, uh, I don't look at my coils very often, <laughs> apart from now when I'm dripping on them. Yeah, my my main thing is getting getting coils available that taste good and that I personally use. Like, 
I just put aliens up there because I know everybody uses aliens and somebody's well, going to want them. Do you know what I've got in here? What? A aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but it's some it's ones that someone sent me to try. No, I'm running Fuse Clapton's. 40 gauge, uh, 26 core. Mm-hmm. Dual core. Oh, the butter snatch is good. Yeah, I very think, good. I think after the show, I'm gonna start doing some product pictures and putting some concentrates on the site because I know a lot of people have been wanting those. Yeah, who was it said about the butter snatch? It's excellent. I want to see. I want to try my butter snatch, but I'm probably gonna have to make a new one because I didn't label the bottle and it got lost in the abyss of bottles and. I gotta like empty out all the ones that weren't labeled anyways because I'm starting over a fresh leaf where I'm labeling everything and just Why? not organized enough. So now that I'm getting organized, I'm gonna be better about it. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I can't put a bottle down without a label on it because I've got two on the desk over there, and straight away I'm like, "What the fuck did I put in here?" <laughs> you know, I can taste it and know that it's raspberry or something, but I I don't know which recipe it is. And the worst time I'd done that, I made a juice, left it on the desk here with no label, stared at it for like two weeks and thought, what is it? And I picked it up and vaped it and it was excellent. And I didn't know what the recipe was. So I just vaped it out and gave up. <laughs> it's, it's in the phone somewhere, but I don't know what it was. Yeah, no, I can relate too much to that. Um... Trent, yeah, thank you very much for putting that in. Yeah, if you guys haven't already, definitely check out the Patreon. All my Patreons get recognized in all my videos, no matter what it is, by a scrolling thing right here. They'll say your names if you decide to contribute to the work I do. And also my cool website. <laughs> Sorry. I got all fancy with scrolling text. I don't know if you can see it on your end, but <laughs> start putting scrolling Yeah, no, yeah. It <laughs> it, it, it's there. I'm looking at it. Mm. Yeah, the butter snatch is good. So it and came I, good. You put, you ended up putting the strawberry taffy in it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's balanced. You you get the strawberry, you get the butterscotch. It's yeah, it's nice, and the taffy side of it works. All right. So what I'm gonna do now, real quick, before we start to decide to like mix anything, I'm going to try the straw nana custard for the Bull City recipe pack because we should do one of those. But I gotta empty my RDA first. <laughs> I done that last night, John, and set the damn alarms off at 11 o'clock and woke everybody up. Yeah, there's no alarm in this room. The only thing is you won't be able to see me. <laughs> oh. that, that might be a bonus, though. Right. Train, I'm not sure. I can't remember if we used uh, Flavor West Butterscotch. I've got, I've got the Butterscotch Ripple. I know that was in there. I don't know if I've got just Butterscotch. I probably have because I've got a lot of Butterscotches. I like their um, their Butter Toffee. That's nice. I think that one was in here as well. Let's have a look. Uh, Corey Ober says, At JFM Development, your Fuse Clapton's look great. Watch your video on Facebook. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. I like doing it. It's definitely a good change of pace. Mixing, building coils. Like I, I just love the hobby, man. I love doing it all. It's fun. The only thing that I have to get caught up on, which I'm going to work on it tomorrow because I'm going to have a lot of time to write tomorrow. So I'm going to like start working on some of the articles and news stuff for the website and probably some flavor notes. Because I have everything like analog and not put onto like digital media. So I'm going to have to do that for the site. But that's definitely going to be some next step. And then adding some stuff to the shop as well. Um, okay. So, let me do a Bull City Flavors recipe pack. I'm going to be reviewing Straw Nana Custard by Ken Oera. It's a very famous flavor. It's supposed to be like a strawberry banana custard. And it has a super long steep time. This has been steeping for quite some time. Uh, but first, really quick... Um, hey, uh, Chris, could you mute your mic for one second? Yep. 
Just really quick, because Bull City Flavors does support JFM development and does sponsor these streams, I'm just going to run this quick ad real quick. It'll only take a couple seconds, so just bear in mind. Awesome service. Check it out. This video has been brought to you by BullCityFlavors.com. Bull City Flavors is the official shop of JFM Development. Bull City Flavors also offers a wide range of flavors from many different companies such as Capella, Flavor Art, Flavora, Flavor West, Hankson, Anywhere, a Liquid Bar, Lorian, Super Concentrate, and the Flavor Apprentice. They also break it down into different categories of flavors so you can easily manage through all the different brands and companies to get exactly the flavor profile you want. Also, they offer different supplies and miscellaneous things such as merchandise. They offer hats here. They also have measuring supplies for your DIY. They have bottles. They have PG, VG, and a brand new excellent thing to Bull City Flavors is the Community Recipe Packs. If you go to the Community Recipe Packs, if you buy the full recipe pack, you get it at a discounted rate. So you can get all flavors from these top branded recipes from people in the community. And look at this one right here. Here's Strawtastic. This is my recipe right here. It has all the flavorings, the percentages, and you can get either 10 mils, 30 mils, you just pick whichever ones you want and what size you want and you add it to your car and you get it for a discounted rate. So next time you're in the market to check out some flavors, check out BullCityFlavors.com, the official sponsor of JFM Development. Okay, thank you guys so very much for watching that. Chris, you're okay to unmute. Um, basically, uh, I like to do these little recipe packs from Bull City Flavors and review them. Not only because uh, Bull City Flavors does help out the channel and sponsor it, but also because I like to highlight all these recipe packs because they are a nifty way for new mixers to get into DIY where the recipe is all put into one and you can get all the flavors that correspond with that recipe very simply and easily. So today we're working on... Uh, I'm going to show the desktop right now. We're sh uh, working on uh, strunny and a custard. I mixed this a while ago, but we're going to review it now, see how it tastes like. But see, this is Bull City Flavors. You can get all the recipes. But this particular recipe, it has uh, Lorenz banana cream at 4%, TFA uh, ripe strawberry at 4%, cap sweet strawberry at 3%, and vanilla custard v1 at 10 percent so like we were talking about earlier this one is a big big custard so it'll be interesting to see how it tastes right off like right now i mean I, i've had this for since the third so pretty much a month okay so this has a long steep time on it so now we're gonna vape it and i'll let you know what it, if it tastes like it's supposed to if it's good like i'll let you know the low down and this is strong and a custard by ken awara and it's a, definitely a popular recipe. So ten percent custard. That's that's some damn custard. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting custardiness. <laughs> yeah. Someone says custard has a twang like a tart or lightly sour note. You're talking about Flavor West? I know we were talking about Flavor West just before that. We're just talking about custard in general. That's to Joe Russell. Um, if you're talking about custards, the only one that has, like, a citrus, you know, I would have to say was, uh, Flavor Art. Flavor Art does, yeah. And Flavor West is not far behind it. I, I, love, I prefer Flavor West over all of them. Really? Yeah, just because it's more subtle. I honestly, I honestly prefer TFA, Vanilla Custard, for the reason is, is it's close to Cap V1, but it's a little bit less, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. And it's a good what, middle yeah. ground. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Strong in the custard. Oh, wow. Oh, that's steeped out really nice. Now, with this mix, okay, it's been steeping a month. I think I think the steep time was a month, or it might have been two months or something, something crazy. I know the steep is a long time for this. Uh, here we go. Uh, proper curing time is one to two months, okay? So it's pretty much one to two months to taste. Now, personally, I would either take down the custard a little bit if you want to make it a less steep time, probably. But as of right now, you do get a little bit of that egginess. Uh, it has steeped a lot of it out. But I think this would definitely benefit from a little bit longer bestie time with in terms of the custard, unless you decide to knock that custard down a little bit. 
But I absolutely like the strawberry, ripe, and uh, banana cream. Oh, it's excellent. It, it's excellent. It tastes like a nice strawberry banana. The only thing is on the finish end, that's where you get a lot of that egginess. And I think that's mm -hmm. where you kind of need to scoop it out. But already as it is, being a month old, it's very creamy, very rich, and you get a nice, nice strawberry banana flavor. Now the bananas, it, the banana in it, it doesn't taste like a runt banana, so it tastes good. It doesn't taste fake, and you do get a little bit of the strawberry, so it, it, it's good. It's just a matter of steeping. So this one is a steep monster. Um, again, you could probably knock down that custard in my opinion and have the steep time be a lot less. Uh, would I recommend? Well, is this flavor to the flavor profile? Yeah, I would say it's definitely a strawberry banana custard, so definitely get two thumbs up for that. And then, uh, being accurate to the flavor description, yeah, uh, two thumbs up for that, and would I recommend it? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely, if you're into straw, if you like strawberry banana, you'll love custards, and you don't mind a little bit of egginess or a long steep time, definitely a staple in the community, definitely a good mixer, good recipe, um... It's going to take a while, but also the flavors he used, uh, with the exception of banana cream, although banana cream is a great flavor, it's not like totally mainstream, but between the vanilla custards and the strawberries, they're very uh, popular flavors and they're very versatile flavors, and you'll get a lot of use out of them. So I would definitely recommend this recipe even for the flavors because you're going to get a lot of use out of them. So definitely, if you're interested and you're new and you want a good vape, check this one out just know that if you're checking this one out you might want to get something that has less of a steep time if you're looking to bait mm -hmm. something right away because this is going to take a long time right. but yeah good recipe i like it um a seen juice man said about he's going to try tfa milk chocolate tonight instead of tfa double chocolate clear tfa milk chocolate is my favorite i think out of all the chocolates and there's a white chocolate as well it might be flavor west's or maybe TFA's again, I can't remember. But the TFA milk chocolate is my favorite. That one I can do something with. TFA milk chocolate. Oh, and someone said about, have you ever used uh, caramel as well by uh, Capella? I have, and it's pretty good. When you open it and smell it, you're like, oh, I'm not so sure about this, but uh, don't use it too strong. You know, half a percent or something like that, half a percent or one percent. But it's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice caramel. I, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was in the group, in the chat, or like on the live stream, or where it was, or some other video. But I was talking with somebody about a recipe, and I forgot who it was. But the person was talking about how, like, they love caramel and they're looking at caramel. And I was like, oh, well. If you're making a nice caramel vape, you should probably even just add butterscotch dripple because they really go hand in hand together and they're good. Yeah. And it surprised me a little bit because his response was, I don't like butterscotch. But to me, they're like very close. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, too <laughs> Yeah, too close. I can't see why you would like one and not the other. But that that's, that's what I was thinking. But hey, subjective. I don't know. Maybe, but I, I personally love both of them. Butterscotch Ripple, in my opinion, is a godsend of the flavor. And that, there, there are select few flavors from Flavor West that you cannot get around, and that's one of them. Right. Very Chris good. said I should try uh, Liquid Barn Lava Cake. I've seen that mentioned a few times here tonight. Yep. Oh, thanks, Train Sonic. Yeah, Train Sonic just dropped the link for my Strawtastic recipe. And you can also, if you already have the flavors too, you can also just check it out on ELR. I mean, you don't have to go buy the buying recipe pack if you don't need to. You know, it's public. Everything's public. Right. Which I was, that was another conversation that we we're talking about in another stream. I was considering if I do one shots, if I was going to make the recipe public. And I think I am in terms of like one shots. Because here's my theory is that that's what my channel is all about. Being community based being like transparent like I, I I thought well and hard about it I'm like if people are going to want to support me and support the what I make and concentrates and need them 
like I, I have no problem releasing the recipe with them because either they're gonna want to buy it all in one or not, and if they have the flavors, they can just do it themselves. I think that's the best way. Now, right. if I was selling e-liquids, it might be a little bit different, but for concentrates, I'm like, no, it, it kind of goes against what my beliefs are. So, yeah. Yep, that's what we do here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. I, I think it'd be counterproductive. I mean, it would still be good for like new people in DIY. Or just people who want an easier, simple way and not have to mix all the flavors at once. Because even me, being experienced, I love these door one-shots that I have now. They're so easy. You just mix them up and it's one thing. It's simple. So what? I get it both ways. I get it both ways. But that that's why I decided to do the one-shots I release on the website. They're all going to have uh, recipes with them. So, yeah. And some of them are going to be some that I already released, too. So, there's what? that. Yeah, because some people don't want to mix all that stuff up. Yeah, or like yeah, some people, people don't want to buy all the flavors. Take, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to be doing my jam monster one in a in a concentrate. But take my jam monster for instance. People are like, oh my god, there's so many flavors. But if they right. had it all in one, they might be like, oh, who cares? It's all yeah, one try it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Hey, Nikki, how you doing? Nikki Vapes is in here. Oh, hey, Nikki, what's up? How's it going? And King Nello, how you doing? Let's have a look at something real quick. Oh, well, you got 20. Just someone give you a thumbs down. That's real nice of them. Yeah, I have, uh, and I hope he's watching. No matter if you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, it all counts as uh, good for YouTube. So it counts as interaction. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like the same person always trying to troll myself, troll me and just not like my stuff, but whatever. I must be getting less popular because I haven't had one for a while. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, I don't read the comments anymore. So. Uh, but for everybody else who actually does like my stuff that's in here, please put a thumbs up on the video and show the thumbs down. It doesn't matter. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's cool. It's cool. It hurts my feelings a little bit, but I'm over it. I want, I've almost killed this battery already. Mind you, I've been hitting it pretty hard all day. Yeah. See, that's the thing about lipos that, like, just the one drawback is you just can't switch out the batteries, you know? I mean. Right. Well, I'll go down and grab a drink in a minute and grab the other mod because it's downstairs where I change the batteries out. Uh, yeah, I keep all my stuff, like, at my desk, but I have to keep organizing it. I just ended up putting in a new shelf just so I could, like, put all my like made juices with labels and I kind of just like organize yeah yeah train sonic said it's the most likely the guy to put in time out earlier that's what do you know what it's funny you should say that's the first thing I thought when I seen it <laughs> might be uh thanks thanks it's me dude <laughs> Uh, gotta be careful. The FDA does not say one shots are e juice. Use the intended use argument. What are you talking about? My one shot concentrates. They're they're food flavorings. Like I mean, you could. I'm gonna even put it on my website. You can mix it with anything. You could. You can mix it in vanilla pudding. You could mix it in um, frosting. Make excellent cupcakes with them with uh, flavored frosting. Like say. Uh, say my straw task recipe, you could have a nice, um, almost like a strawberry shortcake type, type flavored ice cream, I mean icing, on top of your cupcake. So it'd be excellent. And then I'll give a suggested usage percentage, but I think you all will know what I mean. That's what I do when I mail weed juice now. If they ask if there's liquid in there, I say, yep. They say, what is it? I say, food flavorings. Exactly, because that's what it is. Same thing with yep. coils. They're electrical components. There are coils and a lot more things than vapor acid devices. All right. The only thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to sell finished product, and I'm not going to sell <coughs> things with nicotine in them. Right. <coughs> oh, God. I went down the wrong way. <coughs> I just binge-watched Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, I like Walking Dead. Although, some of the later seasons, it seems like it got a little bit stale for me, but I don't know. What I miss is I miss Breaking Bad. I love that show. That show is so cool. Uh, Thad says, uh, what percentage would you put Polar Blast in at and wine champagne? 
Polar Blast I use Blast. anywhere from like half a percent normally to like one and a half. I, I kind of like it a little bit. Uh, and then Wine Champagne is like half a percent to two percent when I've I've only used it a few times, but that's where I used it. Yeah, usually I want champagne, I use it between half and one. And Polar Blast, I start off with drops, and then I just adjust the taste depending on what's in it, because different things can affect Polar Blast and its effectiveness depending on like what other aromas are in there. But I would just start off with drops. Right, that's, I'm the same with Coolada, I like it a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, I, with additives, like, I always like to be on the opinion of less is more and just like start off slow and you can always add more especially with additives uh chris says uh hi chris not to change the subject but i'm waiting for flavors in the mail for your dragon's blood you can't wait to make it and try it do you know what i think that's the last actual recorded video i put up and i'll have to have a look exactly what was in it because i don't i don't even remember i make so many damn things that i just don't even remember what was in it Hmm. Once I see it, I'll be like, ah, yeah. I need to do something about videos lately. I've not, not been, well, I said that about that earlier. I've not been doing anything. Dragon's Blood. Oh, right. Blood Orange, Tangerine, Papaya, Lime, Dragon Fruit shit. There's a bunch in here. Yeah, nice. Oh, uh, it's, got, it's got Powder Blast in it and Menthol. Next week, I have a video. Uh, I have a busy week for videos i have a lot of filming to do i get a lot of uh some of the reviews to do i get flavor notes and then i get a lot of writing to do for the website I, i'm trying to do it all but it does take time and it's a lot to do i also am going to be behind the camera messing around with a lot of the new flavor flavors and see what interesting stuff i can come up with right uh let's see uh, Joe Russell says, at JFM Development, I just realized I was 15 minutes behind on the video. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I laugh out loud. Couldn't figure out my chat was so far ahead of the video. <laughs> Dude, that has happened to me before, too. Like, if, if you go away or go on another device or something, or, like, you pause the video and then play it again, like, you become behind, and yeah, I've done that, too. Uh... Sorry, I've lost chat a little bit here as well. Ooh, it's me, dude. Seven weeks, no smokes, 35 years smoker, and now I'm mixing. Thanks to both of you for all the content. Dude, yeah, congratulations cool. on not smoking, man. Great job. I mean, it, it, it... See, when I first quit smoking, the adjustment was, like, getting used to the vapor, getting used to, like, the differences between vaping and then smoking cigarettes, but once you're in the mindset where, like, Eventually, all you're going to taste is wonderful flavor. Eventually, you'll just not even miss it anymore as long as you're on the proper nicotine and everything, and you'll be fine, and it's just amazing after that. And then, considering you just picked up the DIY hobby, perhaps you're building your own coils, or maybe you haven't done that yet, or you're just uh, using RDAs and stuff. Like, I mean, the hobby side of it is definitely a core component, which I think personally helped me in my success in quitting smoking because I'm constantly staying busy, and doing stuff in regards to it. So, like, you're not only keeping your mind busy, but you're also vaping good stuff, too. So, I think I think there's, like, a bigger picture in why vaping is so successful than just, like, it having nicotine and being a vaporizer, in my opinion. Well, someone asked me the other day, could I give up the nicotine in it? And the answer is yes, I think I could. But I still, in the morning, I still want the nicotine. But even if I was to give up the nicotine, I would still vape. I, I enjoy it. Enjoy the taste. Yeah, and here's the thing, too. It's like, how much nicotine does a cigarette have? Probably, like, I think one figure, it's, like, really unknown, but one figure is maybe, like, 48 milligrams or something like that of nicotine. And considering, like, how many, like, how much people go down in vaping, like, I'm at 3 milligrams now. Majority of people, like, are at around, around 3 and 6 milligrams, depending on what setup and all that. So, like, you got to think is how fast you went down. Like, when I started, I think I started at 24 milligrams or maybe even higher. Yeah, and me too. I, then I lowered myself down. So, there's an improvement there. Plus, with all the science that's backing up that nicotine is no more dangerous than having a cup of coffee, it's like, who cares? So, my 
Vlad says I'm using it to make a cherry Pepsi recipe. Yeah, that wine champagne is about the closest thing I've come to, like a fizziness. It's, it's about the closest I've come to it. Yeah, I, I actually did that with my grape soda and my orange crush recipe. Which right. I still want to work on my orange crush recipe. I'm not totally happy with it yet, but yeah. And as you say about Zero Nick, um, recently I've been putting all my flavors together with three milligrams nicotine. Just about everything. Mm -hmm. um, where I used to put in Zero Nick when I was on trial, when I've just started going back to Zero Nick again. I just thought for the trial ones, and I've been making 30 mil bottles, um, going, going through VG and PG like nobody's business, you know, for ones that might not work. So I've gone back to the 10 mils again. But yeah, I've started putting zero nick in all that lot. And then if I like it, I'll make another one with, with three in it. And I do make one every now and again with six in it. I've got a couple laying around with six in it that I, that I grab. And it's normally on a Sunday morning with a coffee. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like even when I do my <clears throat> testers and stuff, like I like to use nicotine. I don't know, maybe because I feel like it's the closest to like what I would actually vape. Yeah, and that's why I was going back to it. But uh, yeah, I've, I've got. I'm starting to go without it again, just in the the little tester size. Uh, Chris B. Chris, I don't give you and John a thumbs up. Does sideways up the butt count? <laughs> no, it doesn't actually. <laughs> I don't. Unless YouTube's got a sideways up the butt uh, symbol there, it'd be good if they did. All right. Unfortunately, there's one that I don't know. Out of the new flavors from uh, Flavor that I just got in this week, it was the last range of um. Uh, new flavors or whatever, and uh, there's one of them that I've been trying to like, but I don't think I'm going to be able to use it much, and maybe I, I might even give it away because I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use it, but Sun Cookie. Now, the reason I'm saying I'm not going to be able to use it much is because it, it, it tastes like and it has like one flavor that I really just despise, and it's it almost has like this black licorice type flavor to it, which mm -hmm. I don't know what it's trying to be. I don't know what a sun cookie is, or if it is a, a tangible thing, but to me, I get like a black licorice taste to it, and I just I can't do it. It turns my stomach. Oh. I know I've a got... lot of people in Europe like that stuff, but I don't. Yeah, black licorice is, is pretty popular over there. And I, I don't mind it. I've got black licorice uh, flavorings, but uh, I don't think I've, I've hardly used them. It's like um, anise as well. I quite like anise, and I've got anise uh, concentrates, but I have, can't remember the last time I used that. Well, yeah, that's why I won't touch anise either. I just oh, I hate that flavor. But hey, we all have our own things, right? Right, right. Just don't come to my channel asking for anise or black liquors, that's all. <coughs> Yeah, Joe Russell says can't taste strawberry. There's a few people that can't. You said you tried my all-day vape and can kind of taste it. Well, I've got my all-day vape here, and if I vape it, I've been on it today. If I vape it for like four or five days in a row, I'll kind of forget it's got strawberry in it. And then I'll put it down for a week or so, come back and vape it, and I'm like, oh, man, the strawberry's awesome. It's kind of like I get used to it or something. Mm. Yeah, it's weird. Um, Corey Ober, I still haven't looked for, uh, Pink Guava yet, but I, I certainly will once I find it. <laughs> that or the pineapple one. Remember <laughs> pineapple, I done that live on video. Which oh, I had yeah, yeah. I screwed my damn face up. I just wonder where it went. I'm gonna go look for it real quick, okay? Yeah, yeah, get it. Okay. We wanna see it. Yeah, strawberry is a funny one. I've I've been going, uh, you know, up like the 10% mark with strawberry ripe and stuff so I can taste it after it steeps. 
But then I tried something with 5% in it the other day and it wasn't much different. So I've kind of gone back down again. It's like the extra didn't make any difference except to alcohol taste for a week or so. Wow, Thad, strawberry juices make your tongue go, your tongue go numb. Someone said to me the other day, actually, about raspberry as well. There was a uh, raspberry I couldn't taste and said that uh, I may have overdone it with raspberry recently and gone, uh, gone numb to it. Uh, gonna make this juicy peach and strawberry all day vape this weekend. Liquid barn is taking forever. Ordered last Thursday and it will f finally be here on Saturday. Damn. I'm waiting for uh, Capella order right now. I uh, ordered their silver line and a whole bunch of others, and uh, I think they shipped it Monday, so that'll be here some week, some sometime this week. We got it. You got it. We Just got it. All it. right. So here's pink guava. Like he said, off the back of my hand. Let's get it. Oh wow! Wow! Oh my God! You can just smell how potent this one is. Hold on. Let me take a bigger one because I feel like a bitch out there. <laughs> Honestly, this isn't the worst. It isn't the worst. Like, there's some that made me go like that. Like, mm -hmm. this one. This one is. Uh, it has, like, this pungent flavor to it. But, um, kind of like guava, but it, it tastes pungent and everything, but it's not like, um, and it, and it does kind of come across as strong, but it's not like strong with the point where like, I'm like, like that, but yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it does have this pungentness to it. <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't even know how to, how to say that. Earthy maybe? Like really like earthy, pungent flavor? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Chris B says Bull City has just got FA just strawberry. That sounds nice. I got I got nearly every strawberry out there. Um, I love strawberries. And then Thad says it's because I'm allergic to strawberry. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Even though the concentrates have got no strawberry in them, um, it doesn't matter if you just don't like strawberries or allergic to them. It's going to be the same thing. All right, so did you want to make something today? Yeah. Do you know what? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's get some ideas off of everyone uh, for a for a mix. I Me and John have put a mix together. Let's get some flavor profiles off you. And do you know what? While you're coming up with that, I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. I'll try not are to we, sit on my are headphones. Are asking them? Yeah, asking them to see, just get a bunch of ideas and see if something comes up, or if not, we'll just put something together. All right, yeah, so put it in the chat what you guys think we should make live right now together. What we'll do is we'll get some profiles for you. We'll grab a whole bunch of flavors like we do on the other ones, and then me and him will discuss it, and we'll put together a recipe together, and we'll come up with something tasty. At least that, that's the hope. That's the hope. Oh god, all I can smell is this damn pink guava now. Damn it! <laughs> White out. Now let's see. Uh, orange vanilla, like a dreamsicle. Blueberry jam and peanut butter. What? Is that even like good? Blueberry jam and peanut butter. Okay, I'm back. Key lime, key lime pie. We've already done key lime pie, I think. Yeah, we've done key lime. Uh, we've done peanut butter. I've got to put these eye drops in. A cupcake with random fruit. Lemon candy or orange creamsicle. Something with white chocolate peppermint from Liquid Barn. Don't 
Tony says it's amazing, trust me. That's interesting. What's that? He's talking about blueberry jam and peanut butter. Oh, okay. Peanut butter jelly. Oh, yeah. Duh. Like, why wasn't I putting that connection together? I'm such a fucking <laughs> yeah. And I'm Yeah, and I'm English. <laughs> Jesus. Mango and grapefruit. I don't know if I want to do any mango, because all I can freaking taste is that pink guava. My mouth or no. <laughs> I like mango. Actually, I put something together, uh, not last night, night before, with uh, Capella's Orange Mango Stevia. That And that come out real good. It's the first time I'd used it. Yeah, I'm still really interested in using uh, the Inawara, sh I think it's Shisha Orange. It's like from Inawara, though. It's orange, and mm. it's, it smells very promising. No, seriously, this uh, pink guava, it's not like uh, overpowering, it just gives you like this nasty aftertaste in your mouth that just won't go away. No offense, Flavor, but don't try that one on the back of your hand. Raspberry sorbet. Pumpkin spice That's eggnog. Nice. See, I don't, I don't think DIY Vapor could do that good because he doesn't have the Flavor ones, and I think the Flavor ones with both those flavors are the best. Why? Right. So I got the liquid. One. I got the liquid barn one, and that one's damn good. For which one? I mean, but it's already put together. The pumpkin. You talking about pumpkin spice? Pumpkin pie? No, she's talking about pumpkin spice. That's pumpkin pie. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, because uh, flavor has a really good pumpkin spice and they have really good eggnog flavor. Uh huh. I do want to try their pumpkin pie though. What's all my damn charge leaks? At JFM Development, are you having Phenom on? Um, yes. We haven't worked it out yet, but it'll probably be next month sometime. We'll work out the details. He, we know each other on Facebook. We'll talk and we'll get him on. Whatever he wants to do. A live stream or a, a sit down, whatever. It's fine. Mint chocolate chip ice cream. I think he wants to do a live fun. stream, though. Blue raspberry cotton candy. The trouble is with blue raspberry cotton candy is you can only use so much, so much yeah. of it because yeah. uh, it tastes great shaken vape it. You could put fucking five percent in or something and it tastes great. Then after about three days, it'd be so damn sweet it, you'd have to throw it out. Uh, speaking of that, the one I used it in, the, what what I call it, extreme lemonade, that thing came out bomb and i i end yep. up using it and it is very sweet i will put that out there but it's very tasty this whole bunch of different berries and lemonade and yeah it's good uh there's some good uh there's some good there's some good uh ideas out there fa condensed milkshake <laughs> do you know what? i haven't used uh condensed milk for a long time oh god can this flavor just go away <laughs> damn daniel tropical smoothie yeah I, tropical. see i wish you had those new flavor flavors like pastry zest because like i really i really do want to make that pop tart oh recipe roulette and you told me to call you Desi, so it's Desi. Desi Parker. Well, how would we do the recipe roulette? Remember we found that site? Oh, yeah. You'll go in there and spin it a couple of times. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun site. I forgot all about that. Corey Ober says it won't go away for an hour. Well, well thanks very much, guys. I, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> it's almost like... When I say pungent and nerfy, what I really mean is it, it, it tastes like B.O. in my mouth, okay? I'm just going to put it out there. Nice. I mean, they have great flavors, but that one just has a weird aftertaste when you taste it on the back of your hand. i got to be transparent about it. It's, it's gross. Oh, crap. I never bookmarked that damn site. I can't remember what the name of that site was, John. Which one? Oh. The one with the roulette. 
I, I thought I bookmarked it. I'll Google it. Just Google uh, recipe. I think I did recipe randomizer. Recipe roulette. Is, this is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, it is. Here we go. I'll copy and paste it. Oh, and I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. I'll, I'll put it in the chat for anybody who wants to check it out. Alright, so uh, we we'll do American, right? Oh, should we go to Italian? Italian? Okay. Italian dessert. I bet that'd come out good. Okay. I'll share the screen with people so they can watch us do this. Yeah. Alright, so this is the recipe roulette site we found. And it seems like it'll be a good tool to like brainstorm different like kind of things to make up. Basically, uh, you can randomize different recipes. Like, we, we're clicking Italian right now for the different cuisine. And then we're going to click dessert right here because... I mean, we can't make, like, fish dinners and beef dinners for <laughs> you look yeah. I mean, you might be able to, but I don't know how good that would be. So, all right. So, we're going to randomize it now. Let's see what comes out. I got espresso granita. Ooh, I got uh, cassata gelato. Mm. Um, let's see. It's uh, a cup of sugar, four large uh, egg yolks, so... Actually, the gelato that we have can do that. The that's not sh gelato. that's not showing up on the screen, John. It should be. It's probably delayed. It's showing up. Give it a minute. It's delayed. Let me look at the live feed. Yeah, it's showing yeah. up. What? Well, oh, maybe it's. Oh, you, you okay. You gotta look on the live. I saw. I no, mine just stopped going live for some reason. Oh. Of course, okay. when I wanted to see it. All right. So. uh... Oh, wait, hopefully. Glazed cherries, okay. diced apricots, dried pineapples, chopped pistachios, fresh raspberries. Oh, my God, that's something. Yeah. That actually might be pretty cool. Yeah. And it's uh, it's red. Let's have a look. What's uh, puree the raspberries? Okay, so the actual creamy part of it is raspberry well for for the cup of sugar that's sweetener obviously but for the eggs the large egg yolks considering it's a gelato we could use vanilla bean gelato from tfa yep i got that we could use maybe like shisha vanilla for vanilla or simply vanilla or some kind of vanilla flavor right for the vanilla yep. um some kind of heavy cream i mean if we did like a custard or something with it or or even better uh, what's it called the vanilla swirl we could probably use that yep yep um cherries we could use a cherry flavor, apricot. I mean, I have different apricot flavors. Pineapple, that's no problem. Pistachios, what? raspberry. I would probably use flavor art raspberry considering it's Italian, you know. So, I mean, if you want to do it, we could. Yeah, why well, you spun the wheel? All right, so let's try to make cassata gelato. You know, we never tried it. Let's see what comes out from it. Right. Well, I'll go to the table and. Uh... Okay. Start talking some. Uh, hang on, let me just have a look one more time. Do you Vanilla. have it pulled up on your computer? I'm actually uh, no, because I'll um, because it's random. I won't be able to get it. <laughs> okay, I'll just keep it up then. All right. Uh, let's have a look. Dried pineapple. Okay, so cherries, and I say apricots because I'm English. Cherries, apricots, pineapple, pistachios, cream. Vanilla egg yolks. Okay, I like going to the table. Right, we already said about vanilla bean gelato. Yeah, vanilla bean gelato. Where the fuck is that? Do you know what? I've had trouble lately trying to find stuff. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. God, my mixing table's a mess again. I gave myself all that room and I've taken it all. <laughs> all right, so I've got vanilla bean gelato. Yeah, I'm still looking. Uh, come on. Of course, it's going to be the last one I picked. Vanilla bean gelato. Okay, I got vanilla bean gelato. 
Uh, ap apricot, I've got either uh, Capella or Flavor Art. Uh, Don't think I've got another one. Alright, let's do Flavor Art considering it's Italian, right? Okay. Alright, so uh, we did it. Now, pure vanilla extract. So, what do you want to use? Simply vanilla? Either that or vanillin or. Oh, wait, isn't there a Flavor Art one? Um, yeah, I have that um, let me see, I don't know if I've got anything vanilla in flavor art. Oh, I've got vanilla Tahiti. Do you want to use that or vanilla yeah. classic? Vanilla Tahiti would be good. Alright, vanilla Tahiti. Oh god, that smells good. I haven't okay. used that for ages. Okay, so next would be a heavy cream slash light whip. So let's use, since it's vanilla, let's use a vanilla swirl. Vanilla swirl. Got it. Hold on one second, I'm gonna take off my earphones and grab that. Alright. Okay, so now we got vanilla swirl. Now we need to find a uh, cherry. Alright. I have, I have cherry by Flavor Art, wild cherry by Capella. Um, I've got Flavor West cherry. I've got natural cherry, which is not good. Let's see if we have. Hold on. All right, let's use cherry by Flavor Art. Okay. We're gonna try to keep it as Italian as we can. Um. Okay, it's cherry. we did the apricot, right? So yep. next we need pineapple. Okay. I, the, I don't really know if I want to go flavor art pineapple because it's a very earthy pineapple. I've got to. I've got flavorers. Or I've got golden pineapple. You want to use golden pineapple? Because I kind of yeah. have like a sweeter pineapple for this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Next would be chopped pistachio, so we need pistachios. Yeah, the only pistachio I got is TFA. I think. It might be flavor arts. Hang on. No, flavor arts mixed nut. Or nut mix. Pistachio I've well, got. Let me know TFA. What you got. TFA? TFA, yeah. Let me find mine. TFA. I think, hold on. Yeah, TFA. Yeah, I'll have to go careful with that one. It's got a very marzipan uh, taste to it. Smell to it. I love pistachio. Um, yeah, it does, though. Um, okay, fresh raspberry. I want to use, if you have it, I want to use a uh, barrel or a raspberry from uh, Flavor Art. It's the, whatever you call it. It's, it's Flavor Art raspberry. Uh, I don't know if I've got that. Hey, D. Mellon, what's going on? How's it going? Welcome to the and, what's, and what's it called? Is it just raspberry? Um, well, it's called raspberry from Flavor Art. Some people call it barrel. I think it's called like kind of like a barrel roll. No, yeah. I don't. I don't have that one. Okay, so you want to do sweet raspberry? Yeah, that's cool. Cool. That's a great raspberry. Yeah, I like doing that. I knew you'd probably have that one, so I'm like, let's just do that one. That's good. Yeah. I think that's pretty much what we need. Oh, then super sweet for the sugar. Yep. And did you want to put something a little eggier in it? Well, I figured between the gelato, because the gelato is really yeah, eggy. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I thought that would do it. And for like the heavier cream, I was thinking vanilla swirl, unless you wanted to put like a, a thicker cream than that in there. That's the only thing I was kind of iffy about, if we wanted to use vanilla swirl. Yeah. Well, we've got vanillas in it. I wonder if, if we're going to use something heavier... We'd probably want to go with something like buttercream or something like that. Don't know if that's exactly what we're looking heavy for. Heavy cream? But well, yeah, I, I think a heavy cream and a buttercream, that seems like it would be right. Yeah, if you want to go, yeah, yeah, all right, we'll swap out vanilla swirl with Cap's buttercream. Okay, sounds good. All right, so okay. I think that pretty much is good, so then I'll... 
I'm gonna switch the camera back to. Well, actually, I'm using a bottle. So let me change the screen so they can see our pretty faces. Live face. Oh, wrong one. Zoom. There we go. So thanks everybody for standing by. So I think what we're probably going to do next is build a recipe from this together. Um, let's see if I missed anything. Alright. Uh, email one says uh, vanilla whipped cream or flavor or whipped cream. Oh, she doesn't like raspberry. Yeah. You're, sti you're still sharing your screen, John. It takes a minute. I'm back oh, okay. on the other one now. It's kind of delayed. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Um, okay. Joe well, Russell says, uh, sweet raspberry and TFA sherbet is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I don't think I picked up the super sweet. No, I didn't. Okay, so let me think how I'm going to do this because I'm going to need to open up ELR so we can do this. Log in. What's Santa gelato. It's this uh, random recipe thing that we picked from the recipe roulette. It seems like it's an Italian, kind of like an Italian dessert. Yeah. Which kind of looks really good and sounds pretty good. So we'll see how it comes out. Um, Is that what we're going to call it? Cassato gelato? Or we're we yeah. just going to call it? Yeah. Well, why not? It might actually get Flavor Art's attention, too. <laughs> they might be yeah. like, oh, that's Italian. <laughs> Let's see if I spelled that right. Gelato. Yeah. Yeah, I it did. It's just Italian. Santa Gelato. Okay, I'll share. Since we're going to be talking and filling it in, I'm going to share the ELR screen. Because okay. Why not? Okay, so we call it Cassata Gelato, and we're doing, I'm doing 30 mils, and I'm going to be doing 3 milligrams nicotine, and yep. I'm going to be doing Max VG. Yeah, that's what I got done. Okie dokie. Alright, just line up these flavors. Right, so the... It looked like the main thing was like a strawberry kind of set custard mousse kind of thing. Sorry, not strawberry, raspberry. Yeah. So I think the prominent things here are going to be like cream and raspberry, and the other ones are going to have to they'll be like the, the filling, it looked like. Yeah, I think definitely for sure that we need to focus on... Uh... Like oh, a ras raspberry mousse kind of thing. Yeah, like a raspberry gelato, because it seems like a, whatever it is, I think it's like a frozen dessert from what right. it looks like, and it looks like they make it in a bowl, I think. I don't know. Anyways, that's irrelevant. Um, but it's probably like a raspberry kind of gelato thing, so we should focus on raspberry and the creamy gelato factor, and then back to the others in a little bit less just to complement it. Right. Okay. So I'd probably start off with gelato in the recipe. Right. But see, gelato is very is a very strong, potent flavor, so you don't need a lot of it. So I was thinking, just use this as two, and then back it up with the buttercream. Right. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll do uh, vanilla bean gelato. And we'll do that at 2%. Alright. Then we got buttercream, which is kind of a company. Yet. We just want to we I just want to go like a percent there to not overpower it or you want a bit more to really bring out that deep creamy well yeah cuz it said heavy cream so I, I kind of like I don't think vanilla bean gelato is gonna give us a really dense heavy cream so I was thinking more like at least 1.5 to 2 percent again let just do two just go two percent okay Oh, good if I pick the damn flavor. All right, vanilla Tahiti. I haven't used this one for a while. I've been using vanilla swirl a lot. This used to be my go-to. Yeah, this one... Mm, it's very good. Yeah, it's good, but again, it's, it's like not something you need to use a lot of. Hmm. I feel comfortable at one here. Or yeah, one. yeah, I yeah, think one, yeah, one that's what I was going to say was one. Okay. So vanilla Tahiti, how do you spell that? Tahiti. I don't even have it entered in this new app. I only got to write it in there. Flavor art. Uh, Thad, uh, tag me as such. I have an idea for you to do a video for newcomers. I actually do have a lot of videos for newcomers on my channel, but I am working on making a new series of more videos now with like the more knowledge I have in video production and stuff like that. I might make a more straightforward, more updated video for it. But uh, for people who are newcomers at the current moment and you want more information, definitely take a look at my library of videos. There are definitely plenty of videos that can help you get started in the meantime. I just added vanilla Tahiti and it's not come up. What the shit? Are you using ELR? Oh, there, there it is. There it is. Okay. You dumbass. It was already in there. So you got to know your alphabet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing to know. Well, no, <laughs> actually, I put it in right. For some reason, the T came before the B. That's bizarre. All right, 1%. Let me just check my live scale. Okay, it's working good. Yeah, I, I have this new uh, setup, so I can like do better over the head things for my scale cam. Right. It's on uh, so arm. I guess now it's putting the sweet raspberry in. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so now it's with sweet raspberry. It's quite strong to start off with, and then it, it kind of goes downhill after that. I've been using it. Um, at like five percent recently, but you can't touch it within the first couple of days because you will get it gets it's quite um, like like an alcohol kind of taste. But then after that, you're thinking, well, I should have put a little bit more in, you know? Yeah. So, see, that's why I usually like to use it in conjunction with other raspberries. Now, do you yeah. have any other raspberries? Yeah, I do. Last time I used it, I backed it up with Capella's raspberry. Funny enough, I done half a percent Capella's raspberry and five percent uh, sweet raspberry. Maybe we should do that here. All right, I'll grab it. Right, I'll grab it. Yeah, because usually, uh, are you there, Chris? Yep. Yeah, because, like, usually my go-to is sweet strawberry and flavor art. I mean, sweet raspberry and flavor art raspberry when I do raspberries. I love what? the combination. So, definitely, if you haven't got that one, definitely check that one out. It's a, it's, it's a really good raspberry flavor. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, th I think these two will complement each other. Yeah, again. yeah, they're very good together. I tried it with Inawera's raspberry the other day and sweet raspberry, and it didn't quite work the same. All right, so what are you, what are you thinking for 
the ratio. I was thinking about maybe uh, Cap 2, uh, Sweet 3. I was going to go more like Cap 1, Sweet 4. Okay. Just just from using them the other day. Um, because the, yeah, the Capetta's raspberry is a little more tart. Okay. Uh, see, that, that, that's, I think, where me and you have a little bit of taste difference. I actually kind of like that little bit of tartness. Oh, no, so do I. But I'm just thinking, it, you know, it kind of needs to be, a, 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 you know, the pureed raspberries and the sugar they got in it now. I don't think it's like a, well... I'm sticking with that. <laughs> but yeah, if I just using them the other day, the Capetta Raspberry kind of backed it up a little bit. Uh, okay, now the other ones. This is where we're going to have to be careful. Okay, so here we go. Um, so here's the filling. So what I would say, let me just check the recipe real quick. Um, okay, when so I looked at the bottom of that thing, the picture of it. Did mm -hmm. it have cake or anything in there? No, it's kind of like, alright, so it's like a raspberry gelato, like that's gelato and then inside it is like the, the heavy cream and the cream bits and then oh, okay. it's mixed with fruits and nuts. So, right. that's the gelato with the raspberry and then there's the buttercream and then the fruits and nuts. So what I was thinking is alright, let's start off with the cherry. Right, and cherry, in my experience, you've got to be damn careful with it. Yeah. Because uh, it, will, it will take over the whole flavor. I think we should probably go a quarter to a half percent on this. Yeah, me too. It's it's pretty strong. It's like one of those things when you vape it, you're like, oh, there's cherry in it. Yeah, like I don't want it to be like all cherry. I, I, would, pro I would probably do a quarter, John. Yeah, sounds good to me. I bet your cherry's not in here either. I don't know if I've used cherry for a long time. Is that it? I guess so. I don't know why it has all this weird writing next to it, but okay. So we'll do, a, we're doing a quarter, right? Yep. 0.25, okay. And then I'd probably follow it up. Well, since we're doing that, let's do the pistachio next. Okay. Now, pistachio, of course, is probably no one we want to go a little bit. But then again, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit more nutty than raspberry. I mean, than cherry. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I, don't want, I would say half a percent. But then again, uh, yeah, maybe a little strong. higher. Well, I, I don't, don't know. know. I th I'm thinking like three quarters. It's well. Again, we've got, just got to be careful that we don't overpower everything That's else. That's what I'm so, saying. So in this case, I yeah. kind of want to go half. All right. I think half would be better because even at half, like, you're still getting a lot of it, but it, it shouldn't overpower everything else. Because my, my experience with pistachio amongst other nuts is they can get really nutty really quick. I <laughs> get it. No. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, pistachio. Where the fuck is it in here? I'm going to have to add that one as well, so I haven't used that one for ages. Uh, flavor art. No, fla TFA. I'm with you, Trent. Spam is good. <laughs> it looks like spam. Yeah, Joshua Vapes, you missed it. Joshua Vapes was like, oh, I make a coil video. I make a coil video. It wasn't there. No, it's all good. No, but check it out if you missed it. It's on the Facebook group. I made some coils on there. Right, it's got to be in there now. Oh, it was in there. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me tonight? Um, right, pistachio. Yeah, spam is very We said a half. Instead of half, okay. Yeah, half. All right. All right, so we got pineapple and apricot left. All right, so these ones I'm willing to go higher on because I think they're definitely a key component more than uh, cherry and pistachio. Not like a, a secondary component, let's say that. Well, I have to watch the, ap the apricot because it's quite bitter. I 
I was thinking though with like between like having the sweet strawberry, I mean the sorry, two things strawberry, sweet raspberry, the pineapple, along with uh, the sweetener. Right. Well, if it. To I, me, wouldn't I, use, I, I wouldn't use the apricot much more than one. Yeah, I think. Uh, Yeah, let's do one. One percent sounds good. Now then, golden pineapple. This this one's this one's a pain in the butt. This is another one of those flavors that just disappears. Yeah, I'm willing to go higher on the pineapple. Yeah, me too. Uh, flavor arts, apricot, one, and then we got golden pineapple. Uh, for the golden pineapple, I kind of wanted to go around, uh, maybe three. Okay. No, that's, that's cool, because I'm, it, you might taste it when we first start off, but when but we I taste it next week, it ain't going to be there. It yeah. will. Yeah, I think that's good. Like, I, I'm a little bit worried with it clashing with the uh, raspberries at first, but then again, it should die down. Yeah. Okay, and then super sweet. How how high do you want to go on super sweet today? I'll leave it up to you because you know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. There's a lot of bitter stuff, and this is a dessert, so let's yeah. do one. Let's do one. I normally go half, so I'll, I'll meet you in the middle. All right. You said one. Oh, seven five point seven five. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know it's not a huge difference, it's like a drop or something, but that stuff's just <laughs> crazy strong. All right, so I think we're looking good. All right, super sweet. Seven five. Okay. Yep, I got it. All right. Oh, perfect. I liked that my avatar because I, I did on my like website thing, and I guess it works with the e liquid recipes, and the avatar is better. Mine used to be like this weird green thing because it didn't like the picture I put in last time, but now it has like TFA flavoring, so it looks cool. Cool. All right. Well, it puts mine in the order that we've done it right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Raspberry. Apricot. Buttercream. Cherry. Uh, pineapple. Yeah, I just got maraschino cherry, too. But I kind of want to try that one. And I'm making 30 mil, I'm sure that's what you're doing. Isn't it? Yeah. Raspberry sweet. Vanilla bean gelato. Vanilla tahiti. And then... Oh, super sweet was right after the raspberry sweet. Okay. Grab my gloves. Yeah, I got these other gloves because I, I forgot to order them again. And supposedly they're one size fit most, which hopefully they'll fit. But they're also oatmeal, so I don't know if they'll be easier to put on or not. We'll see. Oatmeal? Yeah, I was surprised too. They're, it says durable oatmeal nitrile gloves. What? Well, you mean they smell of oatmeal? No. I was hoping it just they sounds had, like, bizarre. I know, I was hoping like there'd be oatmeal powder, or maybe it's so it doesn't... Oh, never mind. Oh, no, these aren't any better. One size fits most of my ass. My fingers aren't even getting in here. All right, well, once I pour the nicotine, I'll wear the gloves. Damn it. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. The gloves don't fit me. I'm just going to use it when I pour the nicotine out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, so live scale. Alright, so there's the scale, guys. See my cool scale cam? Awesome. Alright, so on. First ingredient is Capella Raspberry, and at 1%, so 0 0.30 grams. Your scale cam's not up. It, not to me or the live feed, John. It'll take a second. There's a delay. 
I guess it wouldn't show me anyway, would it? On no, it doesn't no. show you on Zoom. It, no. It's just on the live feed. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna tear that out. Oh yeah, it's up. Followed up by apricot from Flavor. That's also in at one percent or point three zero grams. Yeah, I like this better. It's a lot easier for me to reach. Let me tear that out. Followed up by buttercream from Capella. It's in at 2%. 0 0.60 grams. Next up is Cherry from Flavor Arts. It's in at a quarter percent or 0 0.08. Okay, there we go. Literally three drops. Take that out. Next up is Golden Pineapple from Capella. This is in at 3% or 0.94 grams. And next up is TFA Pistachio. It's in at half a percent or 0.15. Okay. Right, I've got the flavors in. Now I'm going to have to stick some gloves on. Followed up by Sweet Raspberry. Sweet Raspberry is in at 4% or 1.25. I've seriously got to get some different gloves. These are just a pain in the ass. Right. Okay, sweet raspberries in. Next up, super sweet from Papella. 0.75% or 0 0.24 grams. Super sweets in. Next up is vanilla bean gelato. You gotta have the gelato. It's in at two percent or point six zero grams. Okay, there we go. And last but not least, vanilla Tahiti. Vanilla Tahiti from Flavor Arts and at 1% or 0 0.32 grams. Alright, so now it's on to the nicotine. Nicotine today we're using is a hundred milligram nicotine. Suspended NPG. So you want to make sure you shake it well. If this was VG suspended nicotine, you'd want to shake it even more. Uh, you just want to take it very careful and get it as close and accurate as possible, and just make sure you don't get it on your skin. Keep it out of reach of children and pets, and just take it slow. It's the most serious part about making your own e-liquid. All right, now I said all that, let's pour it in with my two small fitting gloves. Look like a, a squid man. Okay, so we need 0 0.93 grams. Taking this 
glove off. Cause look at this. Look at this, guys. That's that's how my fingers are. <laughs> ah, gotta get better gloves. All right, there we go. I right, saw so thirty point eight four grams of EG. Okay, mine's ready. I'm not going to taste it yet, though. Let's see what it smells like. All right, there we go. Hmm. Now I got to mix it up. Turn it off. Take this Narfal mixer, just gonna mix it up. This Narfal mixer, you can find a link to this in the description not necessary to make your own e-liquid but it makes things a lot easier as you can see because you can literally put the mixer inside any type of bottle and mix it up without having to get all the hand cramps just a nifty little tool get this RDA baked out in a minute That's pretty much all she wrote, guys. It's, uh, I'm gonna switch up the cameras and clean this multiple mixer off. Okay, so let's switch up the camera. There we go. Probably make a label for this too while I'm at it. Dean Millen says, I still think adding that much air to the juice will fuck it up. Oh, so All those here, here's one flavor of them. molecules. Here's, <laughs> here's, here's one of them. Okay. So I'm glad, glad you mentioned that, Dean Millen. We were just talking about this before you came in. Um, see, my argument with that is yes. In the long run, it will probably have a slight effect on your mix if you're mixing commercially. But in like the short term, I, I don't feel like it's going to make that much of a difference because flavor mo molecules are going to degrade anyways with oxidation. So, I mean, unless you're planning on like vaping your stuff months and months and months down the line, which not a lot of us are, we're making it weeks ahead of time and then vaping it, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Plus, in my own trials, I've tried stuff with a, with a Norpro mixer, and I've tried stuff the old-fashioned way of shaking. I don't notice a difference. Now, I am going to get one of those heat plate magnetic mixers and have a closed containment mix and try the difference. But honestly, I, I just don't see the problem with SDI wires. I mean, I, I have heard both sides of the argument, though, I have. But good, see this is good. Like we're getting into a conversation. I ain't going any further on it. See, D Mel is saying you're letting all the volatiles escape air as our enemy. Okay, so a lot of the fruit flavors are the more volatile for example, strawberry, right? Strawberry is a more volatile flavor. That's why those molecules escape a lot faster, right? But my all-day vapes, a lot of them have strawberries in them, and they've not escaped any more than if I was to shake it myself between the time when I mix it and the time when I vape it. So, I mean, granted, if you need, a like, a six-month-long shelf life or, like, longer, if you're commercial, yeah, it might, it might make a small difference. But, honestly, between both of them side by side, I don't 
see a difference. I don't know. My opinion. I guess we all have our own ways, which is no problem with that either. You can do it your own way. Alright, so let me vape something tasty because, like, I've been mixing. <laughs> I hope you didn't see my last comment, John. Um, Trent, no, nah, I, I, I see your comment when you talk about, like, even if you're adding, when they are right and everybody's right when you're saying you are adding air, because even, see, there, I've heard that argument too before, is like, it, even if you're using a hand mixer or another mixer, you're not really adding any air that wasn't already in the concentrate. But that's not really true because what's happening is when you put that mixer in there, you're kind of creating a vacuum. So it's not just what's in the bottle. Everything that comes up from the bottle because the air has to come from somewhere. So I, I don't think that's true either. I, the point I'm trying to make is I, I don't see a massive effect when you're DIYing and making it for yourself. And you're not worried about like months and months long of a shelf life. I don't honestly see a difference. I mean, there's an argument to be made about... um sanitariness maybe because um you know pollution in the air and people want to keep a more pure mix they want to have that argument but i don't see how it affect taste in the short term is what i'm saying <clears throat> the way i look at that as i said before here's uh here's 30 mil of juice you see the air at the top mm -hmm. what does it matter if that air started off in the juice as bubbles I'm not adding any air. I'm not putting it. You can only have so much air in there. 30 mil of juice. You can't increase the volume. That's the amount of air that's in there. And juice does need oxygen. No, well, it, it, it does need it. To, I mean, that's what, you know, it does need it to react. Yes, if you take the lid off halfway through steeping and whisk it up again, that's a no no. Right. But you like, don't want to put fresh oxygen in there afterwards. No matter what, there's going to be air that's going to be trapped in there. Unless you're like in a sterilized, airtight environment. So no matter what, air is going to get in there and it's going to oxidize. Now, I have heard people like uh, New Amsterdam Vape, who actually, uh, he, when he makes his e-liquids, he doesn't even use the droppers or whatever. And he fills it up all the way to the brim and then closes it. Where there's still going to be a tiny bit of air, but he tries to limit the amount of air. So, I mean, I, I've heard it both ways, but yes, I get when you put a mixer in a bottle and then you whip it up, or if you're doing it in a beaker, the air is getting pulled down from somewhere. So I get how that might introduce more air, but there's going to be air in there regardless, and it's just part of the process. So I don't see, in my years of mixing, I haven't seen the differences between when I just used to shake it and between when I started using a mixer to make it a little bit easier on myself, like in the terms when I vape it and then in the longevity of it. Like down the line, maybe like months and months and months, it might have an effect of shelf life, but usually people aren't keeping liquid on them that long unless they're selling commercially. But that's just from what I've noticed. What do you think happens when you put the lid on and you shake it for 15 minutes with your hand? Well, the air that's already in the bottle is going to shake around in the mix. Yeah, that's what Suck I'm saying. It. No matter what, there's going to be air in there. There's going to be outside air. Yeah, and there's the same amount of air in there whether you, <laughs> either way because you can't get no more air inside there. It's, that's... Well, see, D-Milton, like, I, I, I get what you're trying to say. Like, you want the most purest mix as you can and you want to keep it at that long, but, like, practicality speaking, we've had mixes, great recipes, great vapes up until this point where we weren't taking that into a factor and it still came out great. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I get, like, the want to see how you can make the purest e-liquid being in, like, an airtight environment and having an airtight situation, but no matter what, there's going to be air that's going to get into your mix from one point or another. Unless you have some kind of vacuum technology or something where you can do it in this you know, airtight environment. Which I think that at that point, it's a little bit overkill. I don't know, just my thought. Well, I've been vaping on a juice for three years. And I went a year and a half without a mixer. Actually, I went two years without a mixer. 
and then I've started using a mixer on the same mix, and there ain't no difference. And it's been steep; it's been sat there now for about three months, and there ain't no difference. I don't see any difference. Yeah. The only reason I mix it up is just to get the flavors well mixed in there without shaking it with my hand for fifteen minutes. Well, on a separate note, not to like change the subject or anything, but I have something interesting coming in the mail. Because I'm making my own coils and I'm starting to make all like these product shots, I have a cool macro lens for my nice mirrorless camera coming in. It's like an attachment where you put you're a photographer, you know about this. Um they're like attachments you put onto the back of your other lenses so you can actually get in closer and get closer shots. Yeah, they're basically spacers. Yeah, pretty much exactly what it is. But I want to do yeah. that so I can get better shots because what I've been using are these cheap macro lenses from my cell phone and it's not really giving me really nice quality. I was hoping the but, quality would go up a little bit. Yeah, I've got a dedicated macro lens being a photographer. Mm. But then, you know, you've got to pay for a whole new lens. But, yeah. Yeah, hell of a difference. They're, they're about the sharpest lenses you can get as well. Well, I'm trying the cheap route first. If it really sucks, maybe eventually I'll do more. But I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be better than the cell phone one. A little bit, hopefully. Uh, let's see. But you can limit the air like when you freeze your nicotine and you don't want to. Don't want But uh, like, yeah, Will, Will Jameson is basically spell it out in two lines of text using a mixer to me isn't a problem taking the cap off and breathing the juice or taking the cap off and mixing it again um once i put the cap on that's it there ain't no more messing about with it i don't microwave it i don't do nothing with it i just let it sit and do its thing nothing because as this is as this is sat steeping the uh the air that's in there is full of the uh, the alcohols and different things from inside the juice. You don't want to let them off and replace it with fresh air. You need it to sit in there. That's why you're steeping it. Yeah, I don't like the whole breathing thing too much. Um, personally, I don't. I don't I haven't found the need to really do it too much on my end. But see, what I don't get is like the practicality. Like I get the argument of like. You know, making the longevity last long. You're not putting any extra air. Like, D. Millen just made another point about, like, your nicotine and, like, making sure there's not a lot of headroom. But here's the point. When you're buying nicotine, okay, you're buying set amount of nicotine. If you're worried about storing a whole lot of nicotine and having a long shelf life, you probably have more than one bottle. And those bottles at that point have been staying in the freezer and haven't been opened. Now, if you open the other bottle that you just started using... I don't think you're worried too much about the headroom because you're constantly actively using it. And between the uh, one bottle that I had that it took me about maybe six months to go through, granted I probably mix a lot more and it might take a year for other people to do it. But between the six months that I actually had that nicotine, I opened it and I even left the headway in it before I ran out. And I think it was like a 250 ml or a 500 ml bottle, I forget. But between that six months that I actually went through all that 100 milligram nicotine, I haven't noticed any crazy degradation in the quality of how the nicotine actually vaped between that period. So, I mean, if you're already opening it up, granted, you want it to last as long. That's why you put it in the freezer. But to worry about small, minute things like uh, the headroom to make sure it doesn't oxidize anymore. I mean, you're going to be using that bottle to begin with and going through, and then you have the other ones backed up behind it that haven't even been opened. And you limit your exposure by you open it up right when you need to use it. You shake it. Make sure you let it cool down a little bit. I mean, warm up a little bit before you put it in your, like, stash you keep outside. Then you cover it right back up right away, and you put it in. You try to limit it that way, but I don't think a little bit of headroom is going to make crazy much difference. In, like, in the short term, because you're already opening it, you're already using it. But that that's the thing in the juice with the oxygen is what's going to suffer the most is the nicotine, not the flavors. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. But I'm saying, if you already have a nicotine bottle open, you're already starting to use that stash. Oh no, I'm just talking about this itself. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's when you, when you take that lid off. I mean, the flavors suffer, but the nicotine is what is going to take a beat in more than anything. It's very very sensitive. Well, D. Mel, and here's what I do. Okay, I usually have this bottle right here. Okay, I have a 30 ml bottle of nicotine that's just always out. Okay, and first of all, I've had. My bottles don't stay out too long because, like, I make a lot of liquid, so I go through that 30 mil pretty fast. 
but I just keep filling it from one of my nicotine bottles in the freezer. But what I'm saying is I wouldn't break down all the mint bottles and even still while doing that, I still haven't noticed down in like the six months my other bottle lasted me. It lasted me about six months and it was, I think it was 250 mLs. But between that whole time with me just taking it out every once in a while, letting it warm up so I could shake it enough and then refill this bottle, I would close it up right away like I wouldn't waste any time. I'd open it when I need to pour it and then I'll close it back up right away and I'd put it right back in the freezer. And in those six months, I haven't, I never noticed a difference in the vape quality of harshness or potency of the nicotine in that time. So, I mean, like, I get the whole thing of doing precautions, keeping it in a cool, dark place and stuff like that. But the matter of the headroom in the bottle, unless you're trying to store a lot for, like, the, the vape apocalypse or something. But in that case, you would probably still have all these other bottles that were unopened anyways. And that wasn't the bottle you were actively using. I think at that point you're getting a little OCD and it's just a little more than that's logically necessary, in my opinion, but that's just how I do it. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing it your way, I'm just saying in my experience this has worked for me. The, the only time, I, time I've had trouble with nicotine was, where, with, was with some 400 milligram nicotine and that stuff, I oh, mean it's yeah. obviously happening to the lower ones as well, like the 100 milligram, um, but that if it was out on the, t if I trans, I transported it into a 15 mil bottle, and if it was left out there for a week or two, it just went dark, dark, dark color and was no good anymore. Um, that stuff can't stay out. So if it's happening the 400 milligram, it is happening to the hundred, but not as severe. Yeah, not yeah. as quick. No, no, I have no doubt that it's happening, but like I haven't noticed and like. No, I don't think you will with the hundred so much. Yeah. Like, I know it's happening. I mean, you can see the differences. You can even see the differences with this bottle compared to the stuff that's in the freezer. Like, if you were to look at the two tents, the one in the freezer wouldn't be as dark. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that those factors don't affect it. I'm just saying the practicality of needing to worry about it when you're actively mixing. That's what I'm saying. Because by the time you actually get to it and use it, it should be fine before it gets any negative effects. That's the point I was trying to make, at least in my situation. But I also have to take into consideration my situation isn't the average situation for the average mixer out there. I, I'll, I'll put something out there in plain English. Uh, D. Millen just said, I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm crazy. Don't listen to me. The no, no, I'm not got, saying you're no, crazy. No, 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 no. no the, the, the thing I'm saying is me and John are not scientists. We, we, when we talk about molecules and all that, just because we, 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 we don't, we don't go down into it. We're not studying them every day. I'm not um, a doctor. We, we know everything by what we... If we go on a forum and, and there's a big discussion on there, a bunch of people will say, don't froth. Someone else will say, oh, no, it's fine. You know, I can go to one website and see that oxygen's bad for your flavors, and I can go to another one and see that it's fine for them. You know, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't concern me and it's not affected me in any way. Whether there's a downside to it or whether there's not, I'm like I said, I'm not a, I'm I'm not a scientist. All I can say is that it it hasn't affected me yet. Not not at all. And yes, 400 milligram, 100 milligram will kill you pretty quick as well. But yeah, 400 milligram. Um, when I get that shit out, uh, I actually pour it out in the sink. I transfer it in the sink with gloves on, um, and yeah, that, I am shit scared of it. I, uh, it does worry me because I had one drop of 100 milligram on me once and I felt sick as shit for about 30 minutes where my mouth was salivating and just pouring out. That was over one drop of 100 milligram. So 400 milligram was not... Someone sent me it to use and um, I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. I still got it in the freezer and uh, kind of... Uh, it's still. I used it the once and it still kind of worries me about getting one drop in the wrong place. But then when I poured it into the sink, even if I didn't drop nothing, I washed the whole sink out. Because, yeah, it's no joke. I mean, it's poisonous as hell. Yeah. And I'm not telling everyone out there to get 400 milligram nicotine. Well, most people can't get it anyway. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't do it. No, but I, I, th I, think, I think it does bring up a good point. I think, like, I have to do some articles and stuff on my website and also... Like, I want to redo a lot of my beginner videos and I, I, I think we should, like, kind of touch upon it and, like, 
what like the thing for like the average DIYer would be and stuff like that because like sometimes I like we put ourselves into our position but our position and our experience with it might be a little bit different than yours and like the information I've gathered from doing it this whole time that does have a factor in how I'm used to like mixing in my situation but compared to the average person it might be a little bit different and that's how I feel about it you know uh, I'll do, I'll make like an article of what I personally suggest and like how I feel like, you know, nicotine should be handled and stuff from my opinion. But again, there are like so many different ways to go about it and like just because one thing might work for me, it might not work for like you the same way or you might find something that you like better or if it makes you feel better, like d might be like, oh, hey, I don't want to introduce this extra air into my mix, so I'd rather just shake it and it's worked for her. That's awesome. But I'm on the other side where it's just like, why well, put that all that work? I haven't noticed a crazy amount of difference, so why not? But I'm also vaping my stuff quicker, and I notice, like, stuff that steeps longer doesn't necessarily taste as good to me. It was kind of what the other conversation we were talking about. So there, there's a lot of factors. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Dean Minnan said, did you use a proper air filter mask or a chemical hood? No, I didn't, and I'm still here talking to you. And as Brian S said, you, know, you, you don't need that for 400 milligram. It's not that, uh, it, the fumes off it are not that bad. Um, and I'm still here. Should you be messing with 400 milligram nicotine? No. But I was uh, making a point of uh, saying how oxygen will get into it and make it pretty bad. It turns it pretty quick. Yeah, but the, usually you can't even get that unless you have like a license and... Um... I got it from someone that, that did, and they, and they asked me if I wanted to try it, and I said, yeah, I'll try it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was from someone that did. I think they're most they're like selling now to the average person is 200 milligrams, and I think you can get that from Nick Ribber. But still, you know, 100 is fine. It's, it's more than enough. I mean, you don't have to get crazy concentrated unless you're, like... No, there's honestly no reason you really actually need it. Like, 100 is, like, plenty concentrated enough. That's how I feel. Yeah. That's what I use. That's what I got in the freezer. Yeah. I d Someone I d asked me if I wanted to try some. I said, yeah, send it on. Yeah. And uh, as for it not being discussed, um, we are discussing it. Um, it you, can't, you can't just go and buy it from somewhere. So it's not as if, uh, you know, someone's going to go, oh, well, Chris uses 400 milligram nicotine. Let's go get some of that. It doesn't work like that. No, you're right. Let's see. Am I enough yet? Uh, Someone else mentioned about the about the one shots. Yeah, I I don't agree with that either. If you're going to buy one shots and then give them, uh, I don't believe in giving people uh, people to buy one shots. I don't think they should have hundred milligram nicotine to put in there. Personally, yeah. I I don't think so. I don't, I just just for the fact there's. Uh, they're buying the one shots because they, you know, most likely they're not someone that's mixing all the time. Well, when I did the one shot video, I even like suggested getting the pre mix just because it's simpler. Plus, if you're already going straight forward to a My, one shot, why not get the all in one mix that has the PG nicotine, PG VG and nicotine all in one? Just makes sense. Right. Um, someone asked if, I forgot who it was, but somebody asked if we tried flavor tested Cloud9. Yeah, it's a nice, like, uh, fruit salad type flavor. It's, like, a whole bunch of different mixed fruit in one. I haven't did, like, a video or anything about it, but it's good. Uh, Flav flavor West? Yeah. Cloud9. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was uh, the crow. That's who it yeah, was. Yeah, Brian said, taste the mix, guys. I'm curious how it tastes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I've got it here, sat here in the RDA. I'm really interested too. I really hope it came out good.
Ready? Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. Well, I'm getting plenty of raspberry. Yeah, I'm getting the raspberry. I kind of do get like an uh, like a gelato vibe from it. I do. Yeah, I've got that. I've got the raspberry. I've got the cream side of it. I kind of got a I bit of the get vanilla a pistachio. I do taste it. I can smell it. <laughs> See, the thing with this mix is, I don't know what the hell it's like really supposed to be like in real life. But it does. It, it tastes like raspberry. Tastes like gelato. I'm not really getting too much of the pineapple. No. And Dean Millen, I 100% agree with you. Well, maybe I am. He said a what, bit. one shots are awesome. Some one shots include a lube pack of uh, 100 mil nicotine. Giving that to general idiots, I mean, public is scary. It is. Because the people that use one shots, most of them are not the DIYers. They're getting one shots because they don't want to put the other stuff together, yeah. or buy or buy the individual flavors. That's the way I see it. Anyway, being a DIYer, I've got no interest in one shots. You know, I'd rather see what goes in it and put it together myself or tweak it a little bit. Like I get the handiness of one shots. It makes it simple, and especially like. See, the thing is, I, I think that's also different for us than the average person, too. Like, I can see how one-shots would be convenient for, like, say, the DIYer who does mess around with their own flavors to make their own stuff, but also doesn't have all this money or want to try all these recipes that other mixers make. Because, like, say, for example, I get a lot, oh, great, I'm going to have to buy this flavor, this flavor, and this flavor again. But if you sell a one-shot, it's just one thing, and you can just grab it and have everything put into one. So I can, I can see the convenience in it for even other DIYers, but, like, I do have to admit, in a way, for even people like us, like, I would rather mix something on my own than use a one-shot. So, I don't know. I said I'm interested in one-shots because I'm lazy. Well, the thing is with them, put together your own. Put, like, a big batch of them. You know, just make, make a good bottle with the concentrate. And yeah, then like every you, time I'd, I'd, you know, add 10 mil to it or whatever you, whatever percentage you, sorry, 10% or whatever percentage you need of it. Then you just sit down and mix it up once. Yeah, if, like you have, if you have an all day vape, like for sure, do a one shot of it. That way it's like even faster to make if you know you're making it all the time. Like it's just a smart way to go. I think they call them like flavor bases or something on the ELR. Like you can even get it all yeah. calculated for you. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, I think it's good. I want to see how it's going to steep, though. But yeah, I like it. It's it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more of a complex mix. There's a lot going on in it, like, because when you're like searching for it right now, and of course it's probably because it's just been made and it's probably going to take some steeping time and all that. But like, like I do. I I taste raspberry. It tastes like a gelato. I get like. Uh, I get I get pistachio. I I do get the pineapple, but like you have to actually like think pineapple right now and then you like can actually taste it. Yeah, it's like one of those more like complex profiles and you know, your more straightforward vape that has all these like dominant top notes. Once that raspberry sweet dies down a bit, which it does, you know, we talked about that before we put it in there. I think once it's steeped out, you're going to get some of the other as well behind it. I'm not getting so much of it. I can taste the bitterness of the apricot, but I'm not getting the actual taste of it. Yeah, I was kind of wondering how, like, how much it would change if instead of a buttercream, you want with the custard. But then again, it might not but have been as gelato it, it, Yeah, yeah, I think we would have taken away from it. It would have tasted like a raspberry custard. Yeah. I think the Butter King's giving it the right weight. Well, I actually like it. I could just take it like it is. And no, I, I like it too. It. I like and, it too. I'm just like thinking out loud how I kind of want to see what it's like when it sleeps. 
Like that's the that's the only downfall of DIY. You kind of wish you had a time machine. You can just be like, okay, this is how it's going to turn out. Right. But normally, if it tastes good, shake and vape in it, it's normally just as good. If or it's normally better afterwards, except for the raspberry dropping so much. Yeah. All right. So you say cap. You say cap apricot. No, sorry, not cap. No, not cap apricot. It's um, flavor art apricot. And it's bitter to me. All right. So this cuss. Sata. Yeah, it's got. It's like a. Sato. It's like a little sour, and then I get this bitter taste in my mouth afterwards. And of course, that's that's tasting the actual concentrated, but uh, even when even when it's in a juice, so it's not my favourite apricot. Getting a good habit of labeling everything. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to about wrap it up because I gotta make some dinner for the mom mother. Yeah, yeah, it's getting up. I've had late nights every every night this week every night and when I went downstairs to get that drink my daughter's door was open and no one was in it so that means she's in my bed and I'll have to go kick her out <laughs> that sounds like fun yeah she's like a zombie well in case you guys didn't know or you came in late um, I do have a new website, and on that website, you can find different things from recipes. Uh, soon there are going to be some flavor notes and news articles. Um, there's also, like, recommended equipment and supplies, like, where you can get good bottles, flavors, VGPG, and all that fun stuff. There's a lot of recommended things. I also just started selling some coils on there to make a little bit of money, um, just to help support the channel and to support my time with what I do between everything on the GF, uh, JFM development brand and stuff. Um, so definitely check that out. The link is in the description. It's jfmdevelopment.ml. Also, uh, I do have a Patreon account. So say if you want to support what I'm doing here and you want to contribute to the channel, which would be much appreciated, definitely check out the Patreon account. And also, there's just general links and coupon codes and savings down below that can help you get you started. And there's the JFM Development Just For Your Mix Group, which is a community of like-minded mixers and a lot of different mixers who can help you out if you have any brand new questions getting started or doing anything regarding DIY. So, Chris, thank you very much for, you know, doing this. I really enjoy these videos every week. Yep, yep, me too. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And uh, and thanks for everyone coming in. And uh, someone said, uh, "When are you, when are we going to see little JFM, JFM Mini Me?" Are you talking about my kid? Mm. Oh, yep. my uh, baby's due in February, which is actually why. That's actually a good point. That's actually why I'm trying to do all this and trying to start an online shop. And I, I did a Patreon like. I, I, I did say this in another video, but it's to the point where I do put a lot of time into doing this channel stuff, and YouTube doesn't pay anything, and I only have a minimum wage paying job, so, like, that's why you see the Patreon account, that's why you see me settling coils online, and all this other stuff, because I need to make it to a point where I'm actually, like, making a living doing it, otherwise, like, I can't... I won't be able to put so much time into it, and my dream is to actually be able to do this and make it sustainable where I can actually, you know, still work if I have to, but support my family and do all that, which it's, it, it's kind of a thing, you know, having a family, you need money to pay your bills and all that other stuff, so that's, that's the aim behind it, so I want to put my whole soul into this community, do a lot of good, cool things with DIY, put out a lot of content for you guys, but... At the other end, I still have to look at these avenues and try to sell coils, among other things like one shots. One shots will be coming on the website too soon, and just stuff like that. But that—that's the reasoning. I have a family. I'm about to have a baby. I just got married and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's—it's it's cool, exciting time though. Exciting time. I—I I really want to yep. see where this takes me. So, yeah. And uh, someone said to me when my baby was first born. They said, "Spend as much time as you can and savor every minute of it because they grow up too quick." I wish I'd listened to him. 
because now she's 10. I like look back when she was three and that, and I was like, damn, you know, I was working a shitload then and do and in the different things. And, uh, I, I mean, she's, you know, still spent time with her, but it's kind of, uh, yeah, save her every moment. Well, see, that, that's also, like, why I'm doing this, because, like, I don't know if it will be possible, but I do want to do wanna see if it is, and if it is, I do want to try and make this so I can do this full-time, but also, by doing this full-time, I would also be able to spend more time with my kid, because my kid would be here, too, so I could right. do both, and then that way I could spend all the time with the baby and be able to, like, create content and do this and actually make a living doing it. Right. That's the dream. Yep. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah, so thank you for stopping by. Is there any last things you want to say to the next fine folks? No, no. Just uh, as usual, next Wednesday, um, we'll be on my channel. And uh, we keep flipping back and forth. And I think we'll keep doing the same thing. Because last time we were on my channel, we'd done a bit of a strange mix. And it uh, took too long. And there was too much quiet time. And, yeah. This mixing like this is a, is a lot better. All right. Well, thank you guys so very much for stopping by. Make sure you check out the links in the description and check out the cool new website for fine articles and other fine stuff like that. And thank you guys so very much for always coming by and watching the videos. It means so much to me. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day and just freaking mix. Good night, folks. Bye. <laughs>